Welcome to the Connery Cricket Centre for an early start in the final round of matches being played in the T20 Blaze. And we can tell you that the Windward Islands won the toss and they have left out Homer, Gilbert and Etienne. And the Windwards have decided that they will field the first. And for the other side in the competition, in the contest today, that is Jamaica. They have left out Watts, Burnett, and Brown. And so Jamaica will bat first. Good morning, Victor Eddy, to the Connery Cricket Center. Good morning to you, Carl L. Powell, and to all. And welcome, one and all. We had uh, overcast conditions this morning here at the Connery Cricket Center, where there was a slight drizzle, but Overnight, there was an element of rain, but did not do any damage to the playing surface. The outfield might be a little on the slow side, but it is Jamaica up against the windwards. The windwards winning the toss and opting to field first. And Afi Fletcher, the captain, is out there directing matters. We can tell you that it's very interesting at the top of the table. Barbados on 12 points, marginally ahead by uh, net run rate. And also, they defeated Guyana, and that could be crucial in the outcome of the tournament. Guyana, they're also on 12 points, uh, just marginally behind on the net run rate. But then the first tiebreaker is what happened in the head-to-head. -head. And uh, so in that game, Barbados won. And so if Barbados win today and Guyana win today, the head-to-head -to -head tiebreaker will mean that it will definitely be a Barbados championship. Yes, and that will also be the eventuality to where Barbados would have done the double because they came in as the defending champions in the Super 50, which they won, and now they are anticipating to do the double. But we are just about ready now to have the action here at the Connery Cricket Center. And Glasgow bowls the first ball to Rashada Williams, who is driving into the offside, finds backward point, who chases to her left, and there is no chance of a run. One of the issues, uh, Carlisle, earlier clock, like how the outfield, uh, um, no doubt, would have some moisture on it, um, that should bring some sort of challenges to the bowlers to get a proper grip but then also to the grip on the ball will have to be a different style of a grip to accommodate and try to have accuracy, which could be quite challenging. It all depends to on how many of the teams would have been practicing with a damp ball. Deep mid-wicket comes into mid-wicket. Third man goes out on the boundary as Glasgow bowls. A good delivery. Yorker length and Rashad Williams digs it out. Eight o'clock start for all three games in this round. And so it's like the final round of matches in the Premier League in England, where all the games will start at the same time at different venues. Right. <coughs> Here is Glasgow to bowl to Williams, who is driving firmly, finds mid-off, and uh, still no chance of a run. On the points tally, eight points to the Windwards, eight points to Trinidad and Tobago, eight points to Jamaica. Here is Glasgow to bowl to Williams, who is guiding this one down to third man. They'll get a single. And so after four deliveries, Jamaica on the way. They are one without loss. And Williams goes on to one, and Farron will now come up to take strike from Glasgow. Well, Farron will be on strike for the first time, so Williams, four deliveries, one run, and one run is the total right here at the Connery Cricket Center, Jamaica, up against the Windward Islands. The Windward Islands won the toss, and they are in the field. Standing umpire, Candice Laborde, and with her is Jonathan Blades. 
Here is a delivery from Glasgow. Shot. Played into the offside. The, the backward point chase is back. They're exploring the chance of a second run. That's non-existent. And so Ferran goes off the mark on one in Jamaica. Two for no loss. One ball left in the first over. Well, these two have a opportunity to build a good opening partnership, a foundation, as so to speak. And no doubt, Jamaica, on the other hand, the Glasgow to bowl to Williams gets a delivery outside the off stump, chops it down to backward point where it is knocked down and tidied up. So, the end of a very tidy first over by the Windwards. Remember, they won the toss and decided to field first. After one, Jamaica a two for no loss. Yes, and uh, the feelers getting into their various positions quite quickly. But one of the things that we all hope will happen on a consistent basis is the communication, especially with the batters, because in this series we have seen quite a few runouts, and that was due to miscalculation and communications. So the call in two have to be on par, but it's going to be a spinner from this, the media's end. It's Joseph. Um, who has had a good series so far in both events, the Super 50 first of all, and also now in the T20 Blaze. And she is going to come for the f her first over from this, the media center end. And Jonathan Blades is the officiating umpire. He's given the mark, the guard, to Ferran who settles now, and Joseph is bowling a delivery, which is slashed down to third man. Backward point will have to chase back. They'll have chance for two. It will run across the boundary, in fact, for four. And so just slightly wide. And uh, Ferron was onto it in a flash and picked up four runs for Jamaica. Six for no loss. Yes, and the good thing about that stroke is that Ferron uh, placed her emphasis on timing and placement and using the pace of the ball well by not even hitting it hard, but it was guided nicely and earned herself the first boundary for Jamaica. Joseph, who was the leading wicket taker in the C50, bowls to Ferron, who turns it to mid wicket. No chance of a run. She's on five, is Ferron. And once the feelers in the 25-yard circle can keep things tight, that is also a relevant factor in the first power play. Delivery, which is played back down the track and fielded by Joseph. No runs. Here is Joseph again, left arm around the wicket, and this one is played down to backward square. and brings the fielder to her left, and they'll have the chance to take one. School goes on to seven. And Ferran goes on to six. We're in over number two. Four deliveries gone so far in this over as Rashada Williams comes up to take strike. Here is Joseph. And for this delivery, Joseph, uh, that's William standing up straight and plays it back down the track, finds mid off, no runs. Joseph with the last delivery of the second over, and it's pitched wide of the off stump and drifting further away with the arm. And umpire Jonathan Blades signals a wide score, moves on to eight for no loss, win over number two. Here is a delivery, which is slashing into the offside, and that's good fielding there by Fletcher at backward point. She had to move quickly and uh, got it safely into her left arm. And so two of us have been completed, and Jamaica being asked to bat for us at eight for no loss. Ferron is on six from five, and Williams is on one from seven. Yes, that final delivery of that over also to what was good in Fletcher saving it that she lost her foot in, but she grasped the ball quite appropriately and prevented any possibility of a run. Well, that is also an important factor. She is in the 25-yard circle, and once the...
fielders who are in that circle, if they can just apply that pressure, that batters not getting easy singles in there, it might just indicate or suggest to them to have some indiscretions. Glasgow will continue from the far end, and she's bowling to Ferron. And for this delivery, she's getting one down the leg side. It's missed by the keeper as well. And it will run across the boundary for four wides. That will take the score on to 13 for no loss. Badly lined. And it, the keeper missed it as well. And so the, with the fielder at long leg, it was always going to be challenging and difficult for her to prevent that going across the straight boundary for four plus the one for the wide, 13 for no loss. And also, too, the um, extras in that capacity has been of a high volume. Delivery, which is back of a length, and she's trying to force it, is Ferran, and can do no better than play just the way into the offside for no runs. Well, once the Windward Islands can uh, also to try and avoid um, those extra runs by wides and no balls for free hit, or any team in particular, that can be an added incentive for them. Glasgow to Ferron, it's wide of the off stump. Inside the tram lines, though, no call. And so the score remains on 13 for no loss. we in over number three. Glasgow, bowls to Ferron, and she's driving out into the offside, finds mid-off, no runs. 13 for no loss, and we in over number three. And this game is Jamaica versus the Windwards from the Connery Cricket Center. At Warner Park, Barbados against the Leewards. Here is Glasgow to bowl to Ferron, and she's getting a good delivery, and uh, she's playing it. I wait to see the signal from the umpire. It's, in fact, runs. Came from the inner portion of the bat and evaded the keeper. And so going down to the straight boundary for four, 17 it is. Yes, it came from the inner portion of the bat and just missed the stumps. So the score moves on to 17, and Ferron moves on to 10. Yeah, well, I would guess this is the sort of um, luck that batters would need at, at times, and that one was very close to the off stump, but not close enough to break the wicket, but went over the line at the straight fine leg boundary for another four. So Jamaica off to a relatively good start, 2.4 overs, 17 runs. As Glasgow bowls to Ferron, who is getting one badly lined again down the leg side, Called and signaled wide. Third man is around quickly to her left. Tidy is up, and so they run one plus the wide. That will make it two. And so the score now moves on to 19 for no loss. And we in over number three. And the percentage of wides, uh, Carlisle, in this tournament has been very high by all teams. And obviously the coaches would have areas that they definitely know that they will have to work on. Glasgow to bowl this delivery now to Williams, who leaves it alone outside the off stump. No chance of a run. An expensive over so far, Victor. I make it 11 in the over so far. Yes, and it really, with, with that percentage of runs so far in that over, in this over, well, if they, even if they couldn't get the next one, or if they don't, they're still off to a good start. And she's bold. There is Williams. This one on the off stump. And she just stood her ground and had a big hoik at that. And that's a disappointing way to lose a wicket, Victor. I just commented that there were 11 runs in the over so far. And one delivery left. And uh, she was there, not getting into line, just having a big old hoik at that one. And losing her off stump. And so Rashada Williams goes for one, and the score is 19 for the loss of one after three overs. Yes, and here is where that batters will have to think the game much more properly. 
than uh, Williams did on that occasion. After getting 11 runs in previous deliveries, and then also to her shot selection, she was going across the line of delivery and she lost her stumps. If she was l even looking to play it straight back past the bowler, that might have been a better option, but there was no need after having 11 runs out the over to um, bring in that indiscretion and the first wicket goes down for Jamaica. And uh, this is where you want to see the more maturity from the batters. I mean, you have to be thinking we're only in over number three. We have secured 19 from the over so far. Let's not give any advantage to the windward side. But the windwards would be elated. And uh, so Joseph will continue and she will be bowling to Ferron. And this delivery, she's driving into the offside. There's a sweep on the cover boundary. She's there quickly, but they're chasing back for two. That's good running. Very, very good running by Stephanie Taylor, who was coming back to the danger end. And uh, that's excellently done, Victor. Yes, indeed. And it's also very important all the time and consistently to, once the ball is played in the deep areas of the field, how important it is to run that first one quick and every opportunity can be available for a second. Ferron is on 12. And for this delivery, she's defending nicely. Finds extra cover. No runs. Jamaica, 21 for one. Joseph to bowl to Ferron. And she's getting a short delivery, plays it in the air, just short of the fielder coming in from mid-wicket. And uh, that's a possibility of a, a wicket, a chance, but uh, just short of the fielder. And so Ferron gets away with one. She moves to 13. It's 22 for one. Yes, and, and Stephanie Taylor comes on to take strike. Yes, and if the fielder was off to a good start by moving in with the bowler, then she might have had a better opportunity. She's doing that now. Miss Taylor is getting a delivery, which is spinning across her, allows it to go through to the keeper. No runs. 22 for one. Two deliveries left in over number four. And uh, Joseph is coming in to bowl to Taylor, and she's getting a good delivery, which she angles down to short. Third man, backward point, chases across to her left. And uh, there is no chance of a run. Something else you want to see, Victor. You want to see the fielders in the deep releasing the ball quickly. Here is Joseph to bowl to Taylor. Well flighted, played down to mid-off. And the fielder is in quickly. End of the over. And at the end of that, four was completed. Jamaica 22 for one. Ferron is on 13. Rashada Williams out for one. And uh, Stephanie Taylor is yet to score. Yes, that is very important in the deep to really get in the ball as quickly as possible, releasing it, um, trying to restrict the batters to just the one run. But it, if, if we can also see um, the running be consistent here by running quickly for those um, balls that goes out into the deep areas, that can do the Jamaicans a good cause, and that also can prompt them to provide a total that they would think that they have a chance defending against the Windward Islands here at the Connery Cricket Centre. We well, did tell you that it's very interesting at the top of the order in terms of the point standing, but there is a bowling change at the far end, and it will be James who will be coming in to replace Glasgow. And uh, she will be bowling to Ferron. Ferron is on 13 from her 12 deliveries face so far. So James, at the start of over number five. And uh, with the left arm spin, she's bowling the delivery, which is played into the offside, finds backward point. But they'll have the chance of a run as backward point has to go across to her right. And uh, so Ferron moves on to 14. And uh, Jamaica at 23 for one as Stephanie Taylor comes up to take strike. Yes, and once the batters can just play with those soft hands to the left or to the right of any of those feelers in the circle, there's a possibility of a run. But that one was played crisply. 
and Indian Taylor getting another run, so advances the cause for Jamaica. The current run rate is 5.5. Projected score from here on in is 111, 111. As James bowls to Ferron, who is back, plays it in the air, finds the field at extra cover, moving to her left, and another single. So singles from each of the three deliveries bowled so far. 25 for one. And when the fielders have to, to move either side, in, even though they are in the 25-yard circle and it's played with soft hands, we have seen that um, those singles are hard. But this is not a single on this occasion. Short <laughs> delivery and punished by Taylor, <laughs> who moves smartly back into her crease, gave herself depth and thus the room to swing her hands. And she played it majestically down to the vacant long on position for four. Well played. She goes on to five. And the total moves up to 29 for the loss of one wicket. And what was also very noticeable of the execution in that four is that she went forward slightly first, but then came back on the, her back foot as a right-hander, and that was a nice stroke by Taylor, who is an experienced player, and she gets another run because the field at cover um, did not feel cleanly, and the sweeper on the extra cover area did the work. 30 for the loss of one. And uh, we're one ball away from the completion of over number five. They have scored from every single delivery this over. Here is a delivery which is shorter, played bouncing down to straightish mid-wicket. There is no chance of a run, so five overs have been completed. Jamaica asked to bat first by the Windward Islands are 30 for one. Ferron is on 15 from 15. Stephanie Taylor is 6 from 6. And the batter out, Rashada Williams for 1. After Victor Eddy, you will hear the voice of Gary Pemberton. Yeah, thank you, dear. Carlisle Powell, well-projected score from here on in, 120. Current run rate is 6. 34 1 is the score after 5 overs. And the Windward Islands... They won the toss here against Jamaica at the Connery Cricket Center and decided that they would bowl first, as I say. A pleasant good morning to Gary Pemberton. Good morning to you, Gary. Morning to you, Victor. Morning to listeners. So Stephanie Taylor, she is batting and looking good. She's on six from six. She had two good outings in the last two, two games against Barbados. She made 34. And against Guyana, she made 48 outside of Thump goes bouncing down to cover. So Stephanie Taylor would want to play a long innings for Jamaica. Jamaica, in the last two matches, they would have lost those two games. The first two, they would have won them. They are, they are the defending champions, but the way things are looking, Barbados same as though they will win this year's competition. And Taylor is playing the screw of the wicket down to the cover. Thinking about this second run is Taylor, but the return came in on the bounce, backed up and on the onside, so a single. So the total, it has gone on to 31 in over number six. So we're in the last over of the power play. And uh, Jamaica scoring at 5.81 runs per over. We got up this morning to some overcast conditions. Uh, delivery just plays down to cover, down to Joseph. And there's no chance for a run. Even though there's some clouds in the sky, Victor, Victor, clouds are high, no immediate threat of rain. This morning was a bit overcast and rainy in Nevis. So it's Jim, or it's Noel, it's outside the off thump, and they played it down to the cover area. So total remains on 31, rain over number six. Noel is in the first over. Just one run so far. In this over from Noel, who is bowling her first over. Uh, she will be going in to bowl to Farron. Short, and it's swinging to the onside. It will go close to the boundary. The fielder will pull it back just inside the ropes, and the batters cross for two. So two more to the total. It has gone on to 33, with one delivery remaining in over number six. So Noel... He's bowling a first over. Jamaica would have lost the wicket of Rashada Williams to a poor shot. Outside the off-thump, wide, signaled by umpire Blades, Jonathan Blades, doing duties at this the media center end. So extras moves on by one. And one delivery remaining in over number 
six in the power play. So Jamaica would consider themselves having a good power play period. They're scoring at 5.83. Not a short delivery. Came off the body of Ferron, who was just looking to play it into the onside, maybe playing a bit too early. So six completed. Jamaica batting for us, 34 for one. Yes, and uh, we're here at the Connery Cricket Center. Gary, we had some overnight rain here and certain sections of Bastia, but m more specifically here at the Connery Cricket Center. Um, it doesn't appear at the moment like the bowlers have any challenges with the damp balls. We have not seen the rugby news quite often, so uh, that's a good sign for the Windward Islands who decided that they will feel first, 34 for one after the power play. And uh, James is going to continue. The captain of the Jamaica team will be facing up. And she's looking to play square the wicket, taken behind by Cassie Williams, the keeper for the Windwards. So we're in the final round, final day of cricket in St. Kitts. Rest in this women's tournament. Onto the back foot, she forces it into the offside. Deep cover comes across to her right. One more to, to Taylor. She has gone on to eight. And the total 35 for one in over number seven. She's bowled by Zeta James. She's in a second over. None for nine. Ferron, who opened the bat in with Williams, pushed it back down the strip. And uh, there is no chance of a run. So Barbados probably would say have one hand on the trophy. Perron is playing to the offside. We're getting another easy single. Goes down towards the deep cover area. So one more to the total. It has gone on to 36. We're in over number seven. And Zeta James is in her second over. Two runs so far. So fairly quiet over. So far, comes up onto the back foot, forces into the onside. We get a, a single as the fielder came in off the boundary. She feels uh, and it look like Malika Edwards. And uh, so Zeta James will be bowling her final delivery in a second over. Ferron onto the back foot, pick, looking to dab it into the offside. Over completed, seven gone, 37 for one, Jamaica. Yes, and I, I would prefer to see um, that when the ball is struck into deep areas, that you put pressure as batters, you put pressure on those feelers in the outfield. Because when sometimes that feelers in the outfield seeing, seeing the batters running the first one quickly, sometimes they make mistakes by just taking their eyes off the ball. So if this can be a consistent pattern here today and going forward in women's cricket, that will be very good. And we would hope coming from both sides. But the team that can produce less extras to, which a lot of times is a contribution to totals and just takes teams over the line. Well, there is also a change of bowling from this the media center? No, actually, no? Noel. Still Noel? bowling. She bowled the previous over. Slightly over cast here at <coughs> Connery and taken on the pad. It will go so for a leg by. So one more to the total. So the cloud just the sun just went behind the dark cloud which is in the eastern end. And so it's slightly overcast here at Connery. Yes indeed it uh, further east from our media centre here, you can see it's a little bit overcast. Short delivery. And the Ferron was looking to probably pull it into the on side, probably hustle onto her. And she just got it back on the ship on the on side. So the total remains on 38 in over number 8, 5.18 is the current run rate. When was winning the toss in inserting Jamaica outside the off thumb, playing it down to the cover boundary. And you get a single. They are thinking about the second as if the feeling wasn't a clean one initially, but she recovers and sends it back to the bowler. So one more to the total. It has gone on to 39. 
39 for one in over number eight. Jamaica being inserted by the windwards. Drive in does Taylor. We get an easy single. Goes down to Afi Fletcher. She's she's at long on. So Taylor has looked good. Just played some wonderful shots. So with that single, total has gone on to 40. In over number eight, Noel is bowling her second over as the sun comes back with us here at Connery. Her on driving in the air over extra cover. Deep cover has a run into the around to her right, and they're going to come back for a second run. So two more to the total as the fielder had to run across to her right and she yeah. got two runs. So with those two, the total has gone on to 42. 42 as okay, we'll get that. Noel bowls and is driving back down the ground and you get a single so with a single the total has gone on to 43 for one after eight Brown is the feeler who uh, on the deep extra cover sorry Sorry, we'll get that in a moment. Byron, Byron, pardon me, was the feeler down there at the deep extra cover. But those two runs that they got, that should be the general approach when the ball is played out into the deep areas. And Stephanie Taylor, very experienced, and she should be also the one who is um, saying to her partner, look, when the ball is played out in the deep areas, let us sprint the first one quickly. But that was much better. But... Jamaica would be pleased thus far, Gary, with the start that they have gotten after eight overs, 43 for one. 5.38 is the current run rate, so they should be pleased at this particular moment. So James will continue from the far end. Current playing it in the air down to wide, long on. And Edwards moves across to her right, so single to the total, takes it on to 44, and scores from the other matches, Leeward's 34 for 2 in the 7th over, and Guyana 15 for 4 in the 8th over versus Trinidad and Tobago. As Taylor onto the back foot, forces into the offside, we get an easy single, and the total has gone on to 45 for, for 1 in over number 9. Ferron is on 23 from 27, Taylor is on 11 from 14. James as Ferron guided down towards back of the point. Our short third man where the captain, Afi Fletcher, is in the way. And Guyana was, would have been hoping that they could beat Trinidad and Tobago. Flight to delivery, looking to swing into the onside and appeal for stumping. A bit slow, uh, Cassie Williams. But uh, a delivery which was floated up and tempted Ferron, who went for the big swing into the onside, missed it. And the keeper removed the bales was a, a bit too slow, Victor. Yeah, possibly a bit too slow on that occasion. But Connor Cricket Centre here, it's a very open ground, and especially from the side of the housing areas here in Connery, but on the further east where there is a foot soccer area, um, a lot of breeze then could assist slow bowlers here at your Connery Cricket Centre. James swing into the onside. We go down towards the boundary for four. Brown coming across to a right from it. wicket. couldn't stop it. It was a short delivery. And the Ferron just got it through forward of square and down towards the boundary for four. Yes, and the partnership now 30 from of 35 deliverers. So they are building. And Gary, this is um, a platform now that these two have in Stephanie Taylor and Ferron to build and go deep into these overs because they have gotten a start. They're going at a good current run rate, 5.55. So, and only losing one wicket. So this is a foundation for Jamaica here to possibly aim to get over the 100 mark. James to Ferron. Ferron is dabbing it into the offside. And uh, oh. chance of a run out returns, broke the stumps. Taylor might look to have been a bit slow to get back in. She probably was caught by surprise. And the over has been completed. So 9-0 was gone, 49 for 1. Yes, and the 
Jamaicans off to a good start after being sent in by the Windward Islands, who won the toss right here at the Connery Cricket Center. A nice cool breeze coming across the ground from east to west. And this is one of the grounds where even when the sun is shining very hot as it has been these past days or for this month in particular, May, which is coming close to the end, and the sun is with us now, but it's a bit overcast, but no immediate threat of rain. 49 for one after nine overs, Jamaica batting first. And they have a platform at this particular moment. Six runs coming off the last over. Noel will continue. That ball will be signaled by umpire Blades as Noel might have just missed the run or the bails and the far end came off. So that ball has been signaled. And the dark cloud that was in the east, Victor, is making a way slowly down towards the west. It's almost over the ground here at Conway, but no immediate threat of rain. The sun is with us. Taylor is taken on the pad, and umpire Blades immediately shaking the head in the negative. The ball pitched up, and uh, Taylor looking to play it into the on side. So leg by has been signaled, and with that single, the 50 for the Jamaicans coming up in over number 10. Yes, well played Jamaica thus far, 50 for one, 9.1 .1 overs. And uh, these two, they have a foundation, and once batters are in, it is even more relevant that they should not allow others to come in and to start from the beginning. Why it has been signal a delivery on the leg stump. And so Noel just been off target. So another extra to the total. It has gone on to 51. And we're in over number 10. Noel is in a third over, none for 10. The batter out, Rashada Williams bowled by Glasgow for one. Right up. And Ferron is driving. A bit of a hesitation as the fielder was coming across to her left from Swedish Medicaid. She couldn't stop it and they were able to get a single in the end. So with that single, total has gone on to 52. With three balls remaining, the projected score are 109. Noel. Taylor getting a delivery, keeping a bit low, had to come down hard on it and got it back down the strip on the onside. So delivery was dug in short and Taylor was onto the back foot thinking that he probably would have, would have gotten up some more, but it kept low, and she had to quickly get down on it and got it back down the strip. Noel, slow delivery on the onside, we signal wide. So not a good over, we are seeing two wides being delivered in, in this over, so extra moves on by one, and a total 53 for one in over number 10. Yes, and that segment of play in this series have been very consistent <laughs> in terms of wides, which also helps the total of the batting team and they are in a good position in Jamaica. Taylor is guiding it down towards back of the point. The fielder has some running to do. She slides and stops it inside the third man area. And they were able to come back for two. So two more to the total. It has gone on to 55 in over number 10. There's one delivery remaining in the 10th over. And Noel is in a third over, none for 14. Partnership 30 from 40, 36 from 41. Stefan is 13 from 17. And Ferron 18 from 24. As Noel, the ball into Taylor. Slow delivery, pushed it into the onside as Stephanie. And a single to bring up the end of over number 10, Jamaica 56. Or the over has not yet been completed. There was a, 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 a wide, yeah. So there's another. So this, so thought the over was completed based on the monitor, but one more delivery remaining. And uh, Trevor is guiding it down towards back of the point, down towards third man area. And they are going to come back for the second run. So two runs to bring up the. The that shot, it was a shot outside the off stump and played it down to a third man for two. So 10 overs completed. It is 57 for one Jamaica. Yes, and at the break also too for some refreshment, Jamaica after being sent in, they have set a foundation with a good start between Stephanie Taylor and Ferron and they will just need to go along and Stephanie Taylor who is the more experienced of the two, she should be leading by example out there in this partnership and a very good start. So the players are refreshing themselves and I will make way once again for 
the reintroduction of Carlisle Powell, and he will be alongside Gary Pemberton. So we have the water break, and uh, Jamaica current run rate 5.58, and uh, they will be hoping that they can get in excess of 115. So the players are having a ref some refreshments, and the and the ground staff just remarking the crease. As I wel welcome back, Carlisle, back to the, the microphone. Thank you very much, Gary. And uh, for the game which is being played down in St. Paul's, the T20 Blaze, very, very interesting. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago fielding. This is Guyana batting. Last I heard, there were 17 for five Guyana after nine overs. Remember that they are tied at the top of the table with Barbados, with Barbados ahead on net run rate and the head-to-head -head meeting. But 17 for five is not a good score at all from ba uh, Guyana so far in the game. Right, and, and if you're looking to win that game, at least put some pressure on, on Barbados, they certainly would not have started well. But is it that Guyana, Guyana net run rate is not better than, than, than Barbados? I not think? based on what I saw from the CEO of the West Indies board. Okay. Um, I so Barbados, certainly, they have one hand on the trophy. They would have won the Super 50. And now they're looking to make it, make it a double. And if the way the Guyanese have started in... In St. Paul's, it might be difficult for them to come back and win that game. But cricket, as we all know, is a game of glorious uncertainties. And we're still at the water break. And look at the flags of St. Kitts and Nevis, Jamaica, blustering in, in, the, in the breeze. So it's going to be interesting today. But Barbados, uh, Powell, certainly, they already have one hand on the trophy. Well, they have to overcome the Leewards. Leewards started well after seven overs. They were 36 for two. And uh, the Leewards have not won a game so far in the tournament. And so Barbados would be fancying their chances. And Guyana would have been hoping coming into this last round that the Leewards could have upset Barbados and they could have, would have probably gone on to win against Trinidad and Tobago. But things have turned in a sense because Guyana did not doing well in the in that first part of the, of the game between with uh, Trinidad and the Leewards making a, a fairly good start, but we'll have to wait and see what will happen. So play is about to resume. 58 for one after the jinx break. So they seem as though it will, there's a change of bowling at the far end. And so we will get the name of the bowler for you in just a minute, but Jamaica. 58 for one, so they're scoring at 5.8 runs per over. And with that current run rate, they can get close to 120. Don't know if that would be enough for the Winwoods. And uh, the Winwoods, they would want to end the competition on a high by winning this last game. Jamaica came in as the defending champion. They would have won the first two games, but the last two matches, they would have lost those. And they themselves would want to end the competition at least by winning this final game. They will not win. They will not defend the championship. They will not win. Barbados seem to be in very good position to do that. So say it's going to be Taylor facing up to the change of bowler from the far end. And that's Chasey Byron. So they leave on the leg stump and they will able to get a single. So with that single, the total has gone on to 59 in over number 11. And so slightly overcast again here at Connery. No immediate threat of win. And uh, Ferron, who is on uh, 30 from 33, could be faced up, faces up to Byron, round the wicket, outside the off thumb, looking to play it into the offside. The keeper, Cassie Williams, did not collect cleanly. But the total remains on uh, 59 for one. And uh, so we're here at Connery. Winwards won the toss and decided to insert the Jamaicans. 
So it's Byron, the Ferron who drive from the inner portion. We'll get a single, goes down to Edwards, down at Long On for a single, one more to the total. It has gone on to 60 in over number 11. And uh, Captain Stephanie Taylor would want to continue. She is on 15 from 19. Byron to Taylor. Taylor is going for the big drive from the inner portion of the bat. Goes down to deep middle kit. Fila came in quickly off the boundary. One more to the total. And with that single, it has gone on to 61. With two deliveries remaining in over number 11 here at Connery. This is the final <coughs> round in the T20 plays here in St. Kitts. Byron to Ferron. Ferron is looking to swing into the onside, taking on a part load appeal, and it goes so quickly for the single. Leg by should be signaled by umpire Laborde. And there was Ferron looking to play into the onside, shock on the pad, but from this vantage point, it would have been going down the onside. So they got a single. The total is in 62. One delivery remaining in over number 11 as the sun comes back out here at Connery. Byron in the first over. Taylor gets a wide delivery outside the off top, not signaled by Ampa Labo, Labo. So over number 11 has been completed, 62 for one Jamaica. And an excellent platform here by Jamaica. And they can be looking upwards of 100 runs if they were to continue in this partnership. Remember the first wicket went down with the score on 19. And so these two have been committed they have run well together in the wicket, Gary, for the most part. Yes, the, the, the communication so far has been good. The same as the captain has brought herself into the attack, that's Afi Fletcher. And based on the standing of things, she is the leading wicket taker in the competition so far. I'll get that information for you in just a minute. But Afi, Afi Fletcher, who has been doing well with the ball, has been picking up wickets. She has brought in herself into the attack from this the, this the media center end. So she'll be in her first over. Afi Fletcher has picked up some eight wickets from the four matches that she would have played. Average 6.63. Economy rate of 3.53. And uh, she would have gotten four wickets in one of the matches so she has replaced noel from this media center end into the back foot and the ferron got a delivery spun away outside the off thumb she was looking questioningly down the strip at the umpire maybe hoping that he would have signaled a wide but umpire blaze not interested fletcher getting a delivery Ferron was shaping up maybe to play it into the onside, but the ball spun across her, came from the outer portion of the bat, and the keeper Williams came from behind the stump to collect the two dot balls. First two deliveries ball by Afi Fletcher, the captain of the Windwards. And the batter is looking to drive, misses, beats the keeper, goes down towards the finally gave for four. Buys. Four buys have been signaled by the umpire. Uh, a delivery which was flighted on the center like some. There was Ferron going to the big drive. She missed it. The keeper also missed it. And four buys. Not a good showing by the keeper today, Gary. Um, we have seen her miss uh, quite a few deliveries, which could have been stopped. And most of them have resulted in boundaries. Don't think she is reading Afi Fletcher at all. Fletcher not only spins it, Get it but she bounce. gets very good bounce as well. So we are not seeing the keepers for the winner with the three keepers that they would have used in the competition, both in the Super 50 and now the T20 Blaze have not really done a good job behind the stumps. So Fletcher will bowl to Ferron and look at the swing into the on side. I think she's, she's, well, another thing, she's playing across the line of the del those deliveries, playing across her, and she was beaten outside the off number once more. So now Taylor has called Ferron down for a quiet word. Definitely not picking Afi Fletcher. Um, she's bowling right arm, wrist spin, and she gets appreciable bones. And for the most part, she has been on the spot. And uh, she's looking to go across the line on most of the occasions 
Which is why, Gary, there is that fielder down on the mid-wicket boundary. So Fletcher will try once more. Another flight of delivery. Uh, he's driving back down the strip, and he's out caught. Simple as that. She came forward, and she pushed it from the inner portion of the bat, and Afi Fletcher diving forward, taking a simple catch. Chauferon has been dismissed, ball and caught by Fletcher for 31. Never, never picked the bowling of Afi Fletcher. And she was grounded in a crease uh, on a, a previous occasion. She was called down by Stephanie Taylor to have a little word with her, but she just didn't settle against Afi Fletcher. And this time, she pitched it just back of a length, and she was lunging forward and just pushed it back to Fletcher, who took a very nice catch on her follow-through. So second week it goes, 66 for two, Jamaica, and we're in over number 12. It's a good wicket, good over so far by Fletcher. Apart from the four buys, the, and she has picked up the wicket of, of Ferron. And now we see McLean. Natasha McLean is the new batter for Jamaica. And I'm sure that Captain Stephanie Taylor would hope that, that McLean will spend some time in the middle so they can put on a good partnership. McLean would have done well in the Super 50, had one or two good starts in this T20 Blaze. But she would want to make it count in this is the last game for Jamaica, the defending champions. They will not be defending. They will not be in a position to win the championship this year. But I'm sure they would want to end on a high note. McLean and the captain, Stephanie Taylor, would want to put up a good total for the winners. But Afi Fletcher is in the middle of a very good spell. She has been able to extract a bit of turn and bounce out of this strip here at Connery. She's making some adjustment to the field uh, at Backward Square, asking her to move across to her left. So there's a slip, there's a backward point, cover on the boundary extra cover, and a long off Fletcher to McLean, coming easily onto the front foot, and just pushed it into the offside, maybe showing Ferron how to play it. So over, a successful over has been completed. 12 gone, 66 for two, Jamaica. And Afi Fletcher has been uh, very good in both forms of the tournament for the winwards, not just as captain, but as a, as a bowler. And uh, with 66 for two, uh, they have pulled it back slightly, Gary. But if Jamaica are to settle, you can still see a score of close to 100 or slightly over 100. Well, the projected score from here on in is 110. And uh, with McLean there, if McLean can get going, that 110 could be achieved. And more, she's a hard hitting batter. And uh, Stephanie Taylor, who has looked good, she's on 16 from 21. The last game she got 48 from 47. So she'll be looking to continue the good work. But she will be hoping that Jamaica can win this encounter. So it's Byron bow bowling around the wicket to Stephanie Taylor. I mean, at the start of over number 13, Byron. Taylor Taylor is into the offside, goes too quickly for the single return, comes in underhand, but Taylor is home, just pushed it, and just looked up at McLean and went through for the single. With that single, the total has gone on to 67. In over number 13. McLean be facing up to Byron for the first time in this innings. The sun is back out here at Connery. And McLean just taking his gar her guard. And Byron will be continuing around the wicket to the big right hander, McLean. Outside the off stump, looking to dab it into the offside, misses, taken low down by the keeper. No damage done. So Jamaica will be hoping that these two can st stay together because McLean is a good hitter, a clean hitter, hitter of the ball. And on the other hand, the windwards would be hoping that they'll be able to slow the progress. Um, we notice a change in tactic in that Byron is now bowling around the wicket and just pushing the deliveries across McLean. McLean just had a look down at backward square as Byron around the wicket to McLean. McLean's in behind a short delivery, pushed it into the offside, will not get a single. So the total remains on uh, 67 in over number 13. So this Current run rate, 5.36. So the, the projector score drop in has dropped slightly to 107. And Byron will continue from 
around the wicket to McLean. On to the back foot, punches it, goes bouncing down to Joseph. Moves across to her left at cover, no chance of a run. McLean did not get a timing on that. He went bouncing down into the offside. And uh, no damage done. So that's one run has been scored from the four deliveries that have been delivered by Byron. He's been hurting a second over, none for four. And she goes around the wicket to McLean. McLean is punching it back past the bowler. Goes down towards the long off area. Long on moves across to her left. One more to the total. So McLean, she's off the mark. She's on one. 68 for two, Jamaica. And uh, there is one delivery remaining in over number 13. Been bowled by McLean, by Byron, sorry. And two runs have been scored, just two singles from the first delivery and the fifth. So Taylor will be facing the final delivery of over number 13. 5.30 is the current rate. Taylor into the big drive, straight back over the ball ahead for four. It will go down towards the vacant long off area. Good shot. He realized that the, the mid off is in, or there's no mid off, and he played it in the air, down towards the boundary to bring up the end of over number. 13, 70, oh, 72 for two, Jamaica. She just missed her length a little bit and pitched it up. And the experience of Stephanie Taylor said, listen, I'll have all of that. She put the front foot down and hit it straight back over the bowler's head and picked up four. Just the experience which uh, gave her that four runs. And so Byron was not able to finish the over good. But so far, she has still bowled a tidy little spell and only nine runs from her two overs. Six runs coming off that last over from Byron. So Fletcher will continue. She got the wicket of a Ferron in her previous over. And uh, so the current rate is 5.54. McLean is on one from five. And Taylor is on 21 from 23. So Taylor over the wicket. Fletcher. Fletcher in the air, caught at back wipe. No, it has been <laughs> dropped by the field at backward point. There was McLean going to the big drive, outer edge, found went high in the air. The fielder came in and she dropped the sitter. Should have been a simple catch, but no catch is simple until you take them. And she somehow found a way to bubble that catch and to drop what should have been a simple catch and an important wicket. So Fletcher could have gotten two in two. Got a wicket in a first over. Simple catch, put down at backward point. And she's coming tentatively forward. Maybe the one came back in towards the right hander, came from the inner portion of the bat and went down into the offside. So a chance going to begging by the windwards. Let us see if they'll be made to pay for that chance as Fletcher will continue. The ball to McLean. McLean's coming forward, beaten outside the off thumb, not taken by the keeper. Not a beautiful delivery from Fletcher and uh, McLean seemed to be at sea. Gary, Gary Fletcher is a fantastic bowler. She's on line, on length, and she's in the middle of a very, very good spell here today. So, fielder at backward point for Xavier James. And McLean's on to the backward, just dropping the bat, dropping it, and allows the go through to be taken behind by the keeper. So, Fletcher continuing to extract lots of turn and bounce from the pitches in St. Kitts. She did the same thing at Warner Park. And she's continuing it here at the Connery playing field over the wicket. McLean is onto the front foot, shoulder in, in arm. The ball came back in towards her. Shoulder in arm not taken by the keeper. Let us see if there's going to signal from the umpire. A bye. So bye has been signaled. A good, a good delivery. And the keeper not taken cleanly. So we have one delivery remaining in over number 14. 73 for two. Just the leg by, or the, the by that has come off the over thus far. Over the wicket, balls flatter faster on the leg stump. Wide to be signaled by the umpire. Off badly lined delivery, a flatter faster delivery, and went down the onside. So extras moves on by one, and the total has gone to 74 for two. Fletcher has picked up one for one in a second over. She could have gotten the wicket, had the wicket of McLean. Taylor Taylor looking at the delivery, spinning outside the off thumb, taken behind by the keeper. Over number 14 has been completed, 74 for two, Jamaica. Uh, 
Gary, listen, if Fletcher continues to bowl the way that she's bowling and the Winwoods can support her, they can make some inroads into this Jamaica batting because McLean, as clean a hitter as she is, she was fooled with the very first delivery of the last over. And unfortunately, a very simple catch was flowed. But she does look like an exciting bowler, this Afi Fletcher. And none of the batters have been able to play her well. So Joseph will replace Byron from the far end. Eh? Joseph had her previous spell of two overs, none for nine. And you can see the projected score is 106, scoring at 5.29. And so it's again at Joseph, but there's a, a long discussion. L let us wait and see what will happen. So it seems as if she has changed her mind, the captain. So if she has changed her mind, and it will be Byron. Byron will be coming back into the attack. So. Fletcher changes his mind. She was going to bring Joseph into the attack from the far end. But Byron has been given another over. Two overs, none for nine. Her last over, six runs coming. The last ball was driven over mid-off for four. McLean will be facing up to Byron. McLean has faced some ten deliveries, and she's only on one. So that certainly will be playing on her mind. As uh, Byron will go around the wicket to McLean. McLean is on to back foot, forced into the offside. And uh, the feeling is completed by the fielder coming across to a right from deep cover. One more to McLean. He goes on to 2. 75 for 2 in over number 15. Have one delivery has been del delivered by. Byron, she'll be bowling. She continued to bowl around the wicket. So for Taylor, <coughs> the fine leg in Edwards has been brought inside the circle, and then the mid off has gone back to long off. As nowhere as Byron will go around the wicket to Taylor outside the off stump, he's playing to the offside. Will go for a single as Azela James moving across to her right, kind of stop the run. One more to the total, 76 for two in over number 15. So two singles from the first two deliveries of that over. And for McLean, the fine leg has been asked to go back onto the boundary. And mid-off, or long-off, has come, has been asked to come into the mid-off position. So Byron from the far end. Full delivery, McLean is punching to the offside. Will get a single as... Joseph couldn't stop it, uh, moving across to a right from cover. One more to the total. It has gone on to 77 with three deliveries remaining in over number 15. So that's three singles so far in this over from Byron. And the captain, Stephanie Taylor, still there. She's on 22 from 25. As uh, Byron round the wicket. Taylor is looking to heave it into the onside. Missed it, not taken clean. By the keeper, she stopped it effectively enough though to prevent it from going behind her. Wide has been signal. And so another extra to the total. Takes it down to 78 for two in over number 15. Bit of a rain delay down at St. Paul's, Gary. Trained at a, a 32 for seven Ooh. after 14 overs and three balls. Interesting to know who would have gotten the wicket. Well, most likely the spinners. Trinidad and Tobago, but we can confirm that as Byron around the wicket to Taylor. Full delivery song in the air down towards the mid wicket area. She is out caught. Has there been a signal up on the wall? No. It was a full delivery, and Taylor swung it in the air down towards mid wicket. The fielder came across to her left, settled on the right, took the catch, and Taylor has been dismissed for 22. And uh, the Winwoods would be saying thank you very much. They took the chance, and Stephanie Taylor, her eyes lit up when she saw that, saw that delivery. It was below the waistline, so no chance of it being called or signaled, no ball. And uh, so she has gone for 22, and the score is now on 78 for the loss of three wickets. G uh, Winwoods would be saying, listen, we needed that, especially after the drop chance in the over before. 
So the Nevada is Shadeen Nation. She has a place, her captain who is just out for 22. And uh, Jamaica now is 78 for three. And the winners will be happy with the fact that they would have inserted the Jamaicans. Uh, they have not gotten away. They have not have uh, they will uh, score in at five point three eight runs for over with that four. That would have could still take to in excess of a hundred runs, but they are satisfied with the fact that they have just gotten the wicket of Stephanie Taylor who was looking good. And McLean is there, but she has not been able to pick the bowling of of Fletcher and from her twelve deliveries she has only been able to score some two runs. So they will the li winners would feel good with the fact that they have been able to keep things tight and they have picked up the important wicket of the captain Stephanie Taylor. So Shady Nation has come to the middle and Byron the successful bowler. She's in a third over. And so so by running around the wicket to Nation on the leg stump, he's clipping it into the onside. We can use a single. Afi Fletcher picks up, had a shy the stump to the far end. One more to the total. So Nation is immediately off the mark. And uh, with uh, that single, that has brought McLean into strike. So Byron will continue from the far end. This time she's bowling to McLean around the wicket. Bowls to McLean. McLean getting a good delivery on the centre leg stump. Hurried into the defensive shot. Pushed it down into the offside to bring up the end of over number 15. Jamaica losing their captain and the windows will be happy. Powell. And good captaincy by uh, uh, Afi Fletcher as well. Because the very last ball of the over was taken for four. Straight back over the head of Byron. And uh, the captain could simply have said, okay, all right, uh, my bowler might be getting a little bit tired. But she said, no, I'm persisting with Byron. And she was able to pick up the wicket of the captain for Jamaica, Stephanie Taylor. And so a very good wicket there. And uh, we'll see um, Nation, who is out now to take strike. And Afi Fletcher will continue. She has picked up one for one from her two overs completed so far. Fletcher to bowl to Nation. And it's played into the offside. Finds extra cover. No runs. Seventy-nine for three. Fifteen overs completed. Fletcher in her third. And this one is spinning across Nation, played down to backward point. And uh, there were no runs. So rain delayed down at St. Paul's, 32 for 7. Guyana batting after 14 overs and 3 balls. Waiting for an update from Warner Park. As Fletcher bowls to Nation. This one is given generous flight. It's down the leg side. It's called and signal wide. And again, it's missed by the keeper. And it goes across the boundary for four wides. And so the score will move on to 84 for three. But the Winwards keeper has not been good today, Victor. No, not at all. And uh, has made too many uh, mistakes in this segment of play. And Afi Fletcher, like you indicated, really getting some very valuable bunks from her deliveries who is the wrist spinner and also bowls the googly, the captain, Afi Fletcher. And she's looking very good indeed. And most of the batters, as you quite rightly said, Carlyle, they're not reading her. And here is another delivery of that example, extracting some bunks there. And the batter, McLean, um, allowed, or Ferran, sorry, allowed it to go through to the keeper. At Warner Park, Leewood's 81 for three after 14. Here is Fletcher and... Uh, Nation is going back, plays it into the offside. It will run across the boundary for four. No, it's pulled back just about a meter inside the boundary. And so they'll complete two runs. Nation will move to three. And the score to 86 for the loss of three. Just a little bit short. 
and gave her time to use the depth of a crease and played square of the wicket in the offside. Yes, just using the pace and not the intention to use the power. Placement and timing and earn herself two runs, but it was a valiant effort in the outfield um, to restrict the batters to just the two runs. Here is Nation coming forward, driving down to long off, brings the field off the boundary, and she'll get a single to take her on to five, and they score to 89 for the loss of three. Yes, Crafton, who is just beneath us, coming off the long off boundary, and really interesting encounters, but as you have heard, rain has delayed play at there at St. Paul's Recreation Ground, yes. and another delivery of good spin and bounce. This is really good leg break and googly bowling. That has completed Affy Fletcher's over, but since her uh, introduction into the attack here at the Connery Cricket Center is exploiting and extracting bonks also, and she's getting spin on the ball. Very much so, and I like the look of her, Victor. She, she has been on target and uh, with a, a better keeper. We would have seen even a lower score because the keeper has not been able to read her. Yes. Well, and we, and have been mm. we have been fortunate to bring you all five rounds of the T20 Blaze, this being the final round. And today, the commentators can only do good commentary if you have good support staff. And we have Javid, Jasmine, and Yvette who are providing excellent scoring services for us today. And we would always like to thank them and encourage them to keep up um, that segment of their input for this series. But we have also been very fortunate to Carlisle that the weather has favored us thus far, apart from the encounter down at St. Paul's now. I don't think that there have been too many instances of weather. Byron, mm -hmm. first delivery is played into the offside by Nation, and there is no chance of a run our technical support team and our camera people have been brilliant as well. And so we want to thank them for the excellent work that they have provided, bringing these pictures not just to us here in St. Kitts, but throughout the Caribbean and throughout the world. And so we say that we are very proud of you, our camera crew, for the excellent work that you have done. Pro video Production, pro video production, yes. Tracy Byron is in a last over, mm -hmm. one for 14 before this. Balls to Nation, who is getting a good delivery, plays it out to extra cover, and there is no chance of a run. So a good little spell here by the Winwards. Three overs and three balls by Byron, and she has picked up one for 14. She's at the top of a mark and is bowling from around the wicket to Nation. And for this delivery, she is steering it down to third man. And the short third man has to chase back. This one will get close to the boundary, pull back just inside. That's excellent work by the fielder. And so they'll get two runs, and the score will move on to 89 for the loss of three, as uh, that's Nation, who is who has moved up to four, is it? Six. It's nation on strike. And uh, for this delivery, she's back trying to play to win to the onside, goes past her. I get the sense, Victor, that they're not comfortable with Byron bowling from around the wicket and sliding the ball across them. Yes, indeed. And she has kept a consistent line and length there also, too. And she has also placed the batters into two minds at times, whether to come forward or to go backwards. We'll see what will happen on this occasion. For this delivery, she is trying to play it into the onside, comes from the pad, the arm goes up from Byron, but it's a leg by, more than likely pitched outside leg. But she has ended a spell, um, she has ended a spell very well. And so she has picked up one for 15 from her four overs. And that's an excellent day at the office. 16, 17 overs completed, and the score now is 87 for the loss of three. Yes, and a very... 90 for the loss of three. Yes, and a very valuable um, piece of ball in there by Byron. And um, the chief wicket taker 
who was in the Super 50 for the Windward Islands, Joseph, Guiana Joseph. She's back into the attack. And all around Carlisle, the Windward Islands have really put together um, very well organized, and I think comprehensively, they have played well up to this particular moment. Absolutely. And uh, 17 overs have been completed, three overs left, 90 for the loss of three, Jamaica. And uh, Keanu Joseph comes back into the attack. Two overs, none for nine before this. Nation is on strike. She's six from 11. And to this delivery from Joseph, she's back, plays it into the onside. They're chasing quickly for the first run as the fielder from backward squeeze onto it. And she comes running back very nicely for the second run, does Nation. And that's good running. Takes the score into 92 for three. And she goes up to eight, does Nation. Well, I've been making that appeal, and it seems like the appeal, the appeal has been upheld. <laughs> whereby the running between the wickets is always a very important factor in any form of cricket, but more so in 2020 cricket. And Ferran was right that she would have been coming to the end where the ball can reach quicker, which is a striker's end, which she will still remain on strike. Joseph to bowl to Nation. And she's driving down to extra cover. It's fielded nicely. No runs. 92 for three in over number 18. Jamaica being asked to bat first by the Windwards. And we're showing a projected score of 106. We are 17 overs and two balls into the inning. Here is Joseph bowling one wide of the off stump. Played down to the fielder coming across from the cover boundary. She picks up nicely, but she had to move far to her right. And so the batters come chasing back for a second run to take the score to 94 for three. And Ferran presence at the crease, she has been a motivator to the non-striker to look for runs when it goes out into the deep areas. And this signals a good sign for Jamaica. Nation is back using the depths of a crease, plays it down to mid-wicket, and they will get only a single because it was firmly hit. And so the score will move on to 95 for the loss of three. Nation has gone to 11 from 15. Nasha, Natasha McLean has faced the same 15 balls for three runs. Here is McLean hitting this one in the air, firmly down. There is a fielder chasing in. Takes the catch, does it? No, it drops it. But they'll have a single. And it was a long distance running back. And it is always a little bit difficult when you're running in the same direction as the ball. The end result is a single to McLean, who goes on to four. And they score to 96 for three. I was wondering for moments, though, if the fielder who is coming off of the deep mid-wicket boundary, who was actually facing the ball if that she might have been a better choice. But anyway, Ferran is very business-like around the crease and doing nation, it nation, sorry, Victor. nation ar around the crease and really uh, pushing McLean to, to, to really run the runs. And um, that's a good sign. But the feeler coming off the mid-wicket boundary, I thought Carlisle, who was facing the ball, because in the end, when, you, when we look at the replay on the monitor, we can see that she, act she actually got very close. 18 overs completed, 97 for the loss of three. Projected score showing 108. McLean is four from 16. Nation is 12 from 16. And uh, Keanu Joseph has finished her third over and has picked up none for 16. And so two overs left. What will we see from here on in? Well... Most likely, Jamaica should definitely get over the 100 mark. And we've seen um, teams getting over the 100 mark and still losing. But here today, Jamaica is up against the Windward Islands, who have been playing collectively good all-around cricket, both in the Super 50 and now in the T20 Blaze series. Looks like Fletcher, who has changed to the far end and will be bowling the penultimate over. Delivery, which is spinning across nation and through to the keeper. So we're in over number 19. Afi Fletcher bowls a delivery, which is again spinning across uh, the batter in nation. It's played down to straightish mid-wicket, and it goes past her. 
and tidied up by the fielder coming from the long on boundary. And so a single. Here is here is Afi Fletcher, who is bowling a delivery which is steered down to McLean. Short third man it goes. Uh, stay down by McLean to short third man. And that's the uh, single. And so we're in over number 19. And Afi Fletcher from the far end bowls to Nation. And Nation is swinging across this delivery and missing. And the keeper juggles, takes it, no runs. So they definitely have not been able to pick Afi Fletcher. She's in her last over and has been exceptional today. Here is Fletcher to bowl to Nation. And Nation is driving. She's outstomped. She was driving at that out of a crease, pulled out of a crease by Afi Fletcher. And this time the keeper took it, had the bales off in a flash. And so another wicket to Afi Fletcher. And my word, Victor, as a spinner yourself, you must be sitting back and salivating and saying that this young lady has had a fantastic spell today. Yes, indeed. And quality spinner she is, Afi Fletcher, the captain. Um, she has extracted a lot of bonks out of the surface here at the Connery Cricket Center. And really also bonks and turn, but on that occasion, the wicket keeper got it right. She got the bales off, and Afi Fletcher, the captain, getting a well-deserved wicket, and how well she have bowled this morning, and her bonks has been exceptional, and the spin on that delivery that dismissed the batter, it, it had a lot of spin on it, but the keeper, for the mistakes that she have made this morning, that one would have made up for the few blemishes she made early on in the game. So the Windward Islands, they would figure that they would have a good opportunity when they get the chance to bat. But how impressive, how wonderful to see um, Afi Fletcher as a right arm, leg break, and googly bowler, which is the more difficult of the arts with such exceptional control. Victor, on another day, Afi Fletcher will bowl worse than this and pick up more wickets. <laughs> she has had a very good outing today. She is in a final over. And uh, I'll give you her figures in just a little while. As this is Scott, who has come in to replace Nation. And this delivery, it's spinning across her. She can do nothing but shoulder arms. It, it's the end of a most impressive spell by Afi Fletcher. And Jamaica, a 99 for the loss of four wickets, 19 overs completed, and just one over to go. Yes, indeed. And really a very wonderful spell by Afi Fletcher. And one of my friends was making a little humorous joke with me and saying, while Victor, it looked like batters now afraid of spin. <laughs> well, I say it's one of the more difficult, um, especially a leg break and googly bowler who has um, a great amount of bunks and spin in the deliveries, always very difficult to negotiate. Last over, and it is Fletcher. In fact, McLean, it's Joseph who is bowling to McLean. And uh, this delivery is played down to the fielder coming off the long off boundary. They'll have a single. And that will bring up the 100 for Jamaica. 100 for four. Kiana Joseph in the last over. And it's in fact the final over of the inning as well. Jamaica, 100 for the loss of four. Here is Joseph, and this delivery is played by Scott down to the fielder coming off the long off boundary, and they'll have just another thing single to take the score to 101 for four. And uh, they lost, Jamaica lost Williams for one, Ferron for 31, Taylor for 22, Nation for 13. Here is a delivery, which <laughs> is missed by the keeper. There was McLean coming out of a crease, looking to play the big shot. It spun past her, went to the keeper, who fumbled, and so didn't affect the stumping. 
Here is Joseph once more. This one is tugged over the head of the bowler, long off, he's chasing off the boundary very quickly, and uh, there was no chance of a run. There's a chance of a run out, though, because there was McLean off of her crease, and uh, so she was there stranded, just turned blindly, and was attempting a suicidal uh, second run. And the throw came in from Crafton, who is feeling just below us. And uh, Joseph had the awareness to take the bales off and leave in McLean stranded. So wicket number five goes down for Jamaica. We're in the final over, and that's the wicket of McLean. It's 101 for the loss of five. Yes, and that was a <laughs> very humorous uh, dismissal there. She was out of her ground, and Crafton um, direct and good throw from in the deep, just beneath us here at the media center end, and uh, the bowler Joseph quite rightly took the bales off. And to an extent, when Joseph even took off the bales, she appeared to be a little surprised that uh, the batter was out of her ground. But good cricket. Joseph, and for this delivery to Scott, she's swinging across it. Again, it goes to the, to the keeper who fumbles it yet again. But this time, no damage done. Waysom is the new batter. Kiana Joseph to bowl from this, the media center. And again, she's swinging. Again, she's off of a crease. And uh, is she stumped? Yes, she's out stumped. She came off of a crease, did Scott. And this time, the keeper got it in the gloves. This time, she was able to effect the stumping. And so another wicket goes down. And uh, Jamaica uh, finishing on 101 for the loss of six wickets. And uh, so we know that the windwards will look for 102 to win this game. Yeah, and uh, the wicket keeper has left a lot to be desired. And obviously, that is the very area that, uh, in terms of the wicket keeper for the Windward Islands, which would have been, so far, the poorest performance by the Windward Islands in their keeper, who has not been good today. She missed, she fumbled, and... Carlisle, that is one of the areas that the Windward Islands, we can say for what we have seen, but have been the weaker um, mm -hmm. display of performance by them. But in general, they did and have been performing very well. And they would figure at this particular moment, as the first segment have been completed, whereby Jamaica up against... Uh, Windwards. Windwards, right here at the Connery Cricket Center. And the Windwards won the toss, decided to field. And off 20 overs, Jamaica, who came as the defending champions, 101 off of their 20. That is the first segment. Corrected to 102, Victor. 102. 102. 102. And so the Windwards will be looking for 103 to 100 win. 103. And they have been batting well, the Windward Islands, throughout this tournament. And no doubt they will come out and try to elevate themselves in terms of the point <coughs> standing. Well, if we have gotten any more information from the other matches, you will hear from us. But the ground staff are out there doing their usual um, tidying up of the crease and brushing whatsoever debris might be there too. And throughout this Connery Cricket Center and St. Paul's Recreation Ground and Warner Park, the ground staff also too who have been an integral part of this tournament. In general, I think at all venues, everyone played their part and did well. But we can tell those of you who might just be joining us here from the Connery Cricket Center, Jamaica against the Windward Islands, Windward Islands winning the toss, and 102 is what Jamaica scored off of their 20 overs. And at St. Paul's, after 18 overs and two balls, the... Guyanese, they were 38 for the loss of nine. Well, and that would most possibly be the lowest total so far in the in the blaze. Well, at Warner Park, have we gotten any updates as S to the present score there between Barbados and the Leeward Islands? Still waiting for an update for our friends from Warner Park. And uh, the last that we heard from Warner Park the Leewards were batting. They were 36 for two of seven overs. And I don't think that we have seen anything since then. So we're waiting for an update from Warner Park. But 
until we resume here, what we can tell you. Uh, yes, we have an update from Warner Park, and in fact, Gary did give us one later, uh, later than the one I just gave you. 109 for the loss of four after 18 overs and uh, five balls. Now we are showing 113 for the loss of four. And so the Leewards are making a fist of this. Um, Saxena, 31, and uh, Rosel Leibard, 16. And so the Leewards making a fist of this. Yes, and that is a, a, a very good total thus far by the Leeward Islands. And what I have seen transpired with the Leeward Islands, in this, the latter part of the tournament, we are seeing more relatively reasonably and good scores coming from the Leewards. So this would indicate to me as a signal if the Leeward Islands had a different process coming into this particular tournament, I believe the results and the performances in general would have been totally different. Yeah, but our job here is to tell you that at the Connery Cricket Center, the Windward Islands asked Jamaica to bat first, and after 20 overs, Jamaica, 102 for the loss of six, will be back with you momentarily when the Windwards will reply and search for 103 runs to win this game. Back with you in a bit.
welcome back here at the Conner welcome back here at the Connery Cricket Center where uh, the ground staff they are doing their gardenings and doing remarking the creases making sure that they are bright so the umpires can see clearly they are out there in the middle already the umpires and now the Jamaican players are making their way out into the middle to defend 102 which they scored by losing just some six wickets, the Windward Islands, after winning the toss here at the Connery Cricket Center, invited the Jamaicans to bat, and they scored 102 for six off of their 20. And Jamaica will go out and try to defend the 102. With me again to resume this first segment of play, Gary Pemberton and Gary 102 is on the board and though the Windward Islands have been batting well throughout this tournament um, so here again another interesting encounter of the last round of matches one being played here at the Connery Cricket Center one at the St. Paul's Recreation Ground and one at the Warner Park International Cricket Stadium all right good afternoon good day good morning to <laughs> listeners <laughs> We tell you that the winners are about to start the reply. The two openers are in the middle. That's Data James and Jamila Glasgow. So it will be, looks like, is that the way some from the far end will be opening, it, opening the attack for Jamaica. So the left-handed James will be facing up to way some. There's a slip. There is a point next to cover. There is a mid-off. On the onside, we have a short fine leg. There is a mid wicket and a mid on. So the target is 103 that Leeward, the Winwoods would have to make to win. And we are told that Guyana, they dismissed for 39 in St. Paul's. Victor, what's wrong with the pitch in St. Paul's? And the Leeward's made 121 versus Barbados at Warner Park. So it's going to be way some. We're bowling the first delivery to. Zeta James, the left-hander. Or oh, Glasgow, sorry, it's Glasgow. Is the batter facing up. And a lovely shot. That will go into the boundary for four. It was beautifully driven through the offside. It was pitched up. And Glasgow drove it sweetly through extra cover and down towards the boundary for four. Yes, and if... If any young ladies who are looking at this particular game here at this ground and seeing that cover drive, then you can get a true picture of an orthodox cover drive. She did not place emphasis on power. It was sheer placement and timing and four good-looking runs into the deep extra cover boundary. So Wesom will try once more to bowl to the left-handed Glasgow. She's just turning it down to a third man. Is a fielder, White, coming off the boundary. So another run to the total. It has gone on to five. So two deliveries have yielded five runs so far. Yes, and uh, off to a good start off the first two deliveries. And calculating the situation, no doubt these two would know that um, how important it is to have a foundation for their team. So James faces up to Wissom, gets a delivery, making some height, pulling the bottom hand off the bat, and he goes through for a single. The fielder coming in from the short, finally gave it, couldn't stop the one, but the ball made some height. She was coming onto the front foot. Um, she's a short batter, but she came onto the front foot, and she pulled the bottom hand off the bat, but got a single in the end. Yes, and it went to, as it came as a leg bite, but one more in any event to the total. So, so thus far, they're off to a good start, getting a run off for every delivery. Way some, and uh, Glasgow is in behind it. Push the bat on the strip, so the fielder inside the circle at fine leg is shelter. Yeah, and Way some looks like one who is just over, uh, or just about a six footer. So she's coming from high with a high arm action. So she should be able to extract some sort of bounce. She over the wicket, onto the back foot, punches into the offside. Fielder giving some chase down towards deep cover. She cannot stop it. It has gone into the boundary. Another wonderful shot there by Glasgow. She was onto the back foot and she pushed it this time through the cover, between cover and extra cover, down towards the boundary for four. There was a field on the deep cover boundary, but she couldn't get around. So four more to the total. 
Yes, and Glasgow are using good timing and placement, another well-executed um, cover drive all along the ground. And even though there's a feel on the deep extra cover boundary, she was not quick enough to pull it back in. Glasgow come forward, driving in the air, over mid-off. It's going down towards the boundary for another force, an, an excellent and expensive over so far for the, the Jamaicans. And uh, with that shot, the total has gone on to 14 without y loss. Yes, and 14 off of the first over. So that will suggest to both batters then, with getting 14 off the, the first over, there is no need at this particular second over to bring in any indiscretions, but just try to um, play it with soft hands, especially to the feelers who are inside the 25-yard circle, whereby either to their left or their right, but with such a good start, there is absolutely no need for that type of thinking or playing at this second over, which will be coming from this, the media center end. So both batters has a good foundation so far because to get 14 off of the first over is uh, a very good one, Gary. So Glasgow, 13 from five, and Zilla James, just a one delivery. She's on, she has scored one. So Selena White will be picking up the attack from this, the media center end. And she'll be bowling to Zeta James into the offside. Goes down to extra cover where the captain Stephanie Taylor is in the way, she feels. So Jamaica would want to keep things tight, but the windwards have started quickly. <coughs> Some 14 runs off the first over, three fours, two lovely cover drives, and White misses a run. Total remains on 14. So the encounter at, at St. Paul's, Victor, 39 runs. Victor, what's wrong with the pitch in St. Paul's? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, you see, and the other side of it might well be, but here is White. Um, one played quietly back down the track. No run here at the Connery Cricket Center, Jamaica versus the Leewards. Well, the thing is, too, that the bowlers might have just bowled very well. And uh, many times um, t when bowlers um, make batters play fall strokes and probably the bowling might have just been exceptional. So but White just mm -hmm. turned the delivery into the onside. We are Scott at mid wicket moving across to her left. So one more to the total. So James is on to two and a total 15 in over number two. Well, the Leeward Islands have posted a, a good uh, total against Barbados at Warner Park. So for pride, if the Leeward Islands can come out victorious, that will be at least they'll come out the, the tournament achieving something big in that aspect if they will defeat Barbados. Only time will tell as White over the wicket and Glasgow into the onside thinking about the single. But Scott is coming in quickly from mid wicket and prevents any possibility of a run. So we ex this last round started with high expectations. We expected s good things from Guyana based on the last performance against Jamaica, but they have disappointed their fans and, and persons will be hoping that they could have put up a good performance against the TNT team. Short and played it in the air. Taken at backward point. It was short and uh, there was uh, the batter, uh, Glasgow playing it down towards the backward point. The catch has been taken and the win was losing the first wicket with a score on 15. Yes, and that was a very good catch. The field had to move to her left, and it was low. It was struck hard, too, and she brought it in with both hands. So the win was losing their first wicket after um, 15 runs on the board. They got 14 in the first, and that was a very good catch at point. So Jamaica striking and coming back good in the second over because off of the first over, uh, the windwards, they were off the mark for 14. Well, losing their first wicket now, 15 it is for one. So a good comeback, second over thus far for the Jamaicans who came here into this tournament as the defending champions. But now I don't think they will have an opportunity to raise that trophy on, uh, on this occasion. So it's going to be Afi Fletcher, who has replaced Jamila Glasgow, who was just caught at backward point. 
And uh, the Jamaicans picking up an early wicket, 15 for one. But they're scoring at 8.18 runs for over. We need another 86 from 109. And White to be bowling to the captain of the Winwoods, that's Fletcher. When she was in the field, she had four overs, two for 11. <coughs> which included a one maiden as White misses a run. <coughs> so the Winwoods are off to a fly in terms of the first over 14 runs. And the Jamaica will, they have come back in the second over. They have picked up a wicket, so they want to keep the run rate down. Wide outside the off thumb, should be signaled by the umpire. The blade, so another ex uh, extra has been added to the total. Seven, 16 for one in over number two, Selena White. Was done well, fairly well for Jamaica. She has picked up wickets. She got wickets in the, in the Super 50. And she has picked up some wickets as well in the T20 blaze outside the off thumbs. Fletcher is playing a lazy shot. Bring up the end of the second over. The Jamaicans are able to get a wicket in, in that second over after two overs, 16 for one, the windwards. Yes, a good second over by White, who operated here from the media center end, coming back well because off of the first over, some 14 runs were struck. And also now to Jamaica having a wicket going down or ta have, ta have taken a wicket off the Windward Islands innings. But the Windward Islands won the toss and asked Jamaica to bat first, and they scored 102 off of their 20. So another good contest, and all the matches have been well contested, and more interestingly so, the one at St. Paul's today thus far. So Misha and Waysom will continue from the far end, wide outside the off-thumb signal now by umpire Laborde. So it should move on by one. And the total has gone to 17 for one. So with 39, it will be difficult for you to defend 39 runs, Victor. Well, uh, one or two bowlers can get a hat trick apiece. And um, the, that is the presentation of the game of glorious uncertainties. <laughs> with some outside the off thumb. And uh, James guiding it down towards that's Nicole Campbell at backward point. So she probably. She was the one who took the catch to dismiss Glasgow. So it's going to be way some. We'll continue from the far end. Ball to Zeta James outside the off thumb. She's coming onto the front foot. Ball making some height. And pushed it down to extra cover. Where Scott is in the way she feels. And a total remains on 17 in over number three. They are scoring a 7.29, required rate 4.87. As we some get the delivery outside the off thumb, that's Zeta James guiding it down towards Nicole Campbell at backward point, she feels. No chance of run, so apart from the wide delivery in the first ball, we have seen three dot balls since that, so good tight over from we some so far, our first over cost some 14 runs. James is driving into the offside to get a single. As the fielder coming in quickly off the boundary, sends the return to the keeper. One more to the total, 18 for one. Yes, and the fielder coming off the deep extra cover boundary, doing the appropriate thing, attacking the ball, and which suggested to the batters they can only get one and only one they got in the end. 18, it is for one. The Windward Islands, they are chasing 103 to get for victory, which the Jamaicans posted off their 20 overs. And presently, they are 18 for the loss of one wicket. So, Wissam will be bowling to Afi Fletcher. She is the captain, just faced one delivery, not yet off the mark. Good sunshine at Connery. Ball keeping it a little bit a little low. But Fletcher is to the measure of it, pushed it back on the strip. And uh, there is no chance of a run. Yes, and the overcast conditions that we saw earlier now, it looked like it has dispersed and we are very well blessed with um, brilliant sunshine here at the Connery Cricket Center. So good for cricket out there in the middle. Way some to Fletcher. Fletcher getting a delivery on the leg stump, comes off the pad and knocked down by the keeper. Rashada Williams, so three gone, 18 for one. 
the winners. Yes, and somehow I'm getting an impression looking at Fletcher at the crease. Uh, she she does not appear at this present moment thus far to look a bit more businesslike at the crease. Um, in the previous over, she was playing quite casual, a backward defensive stroke, and uh, the one that struck her pad of the final delivery from Waysom, she looked a bit casual, Gary. I do not know if you've um, seen any sort of uh, difference in Afi Fletcher's approach, but it's a white ball to Zeta James down into the offside. And there's no chance of run. She had a good spell. She came into this round of matches with eight wickets. That's Fletcher. So she would have added two. Selena White, she came into this game with five wickets. So she al already added one onto the leg stump. And uh, James is working it down towards back of the square for Shadow Williams to move from behind the stumps. And uh, so one more to the total. It has gone on to 19. So indicating that Fletcher is looking a bit casual a little too casual yeah it, it she looks that way to me but let's just see if there will be any signs of improvement in that sort of body language of Fan Fletcher white balls Fletcher is onto the back foot not, not timing it goes bouncing down to the captain Stephanie Taylor at extra cover and there's no chance to run but she had a good spell while she was bowling two wickets for 11 runs as Afi Fletcher She'd want to top that off with a good batting performance as well. White would want to prevent that. Outside the off-time playing square of the wicket. And it goes down to Wilmot, who is on the boundary. She moves across to her left, one more to the total. It has gone on to 20 for one in over number four. Just two runs so far in the over. And Selena White has been bowling very tight. Yes, and really... I also picked up too that when the ball, even when it's played crisply out into the deep e areas, the feelers are getting good bunks. We have not seen. And I is this a wicket uh, or an appeal? And uh, the batter was trying to hit it through square leg, but most likely it came off the pad. Yes, on the outfield, uh, I recognize that there we have not seen any uneven bunks in that sense, so the feelers have an opportunity to attack the ball in the deep areas, which Jamaica have been doing thus far. White to James, turn it into the onside. We got an easy single as Scott has to move across to her left from Street this middle get down to back of the square to bring up the end of over number four. 21 for one, the windwards. Yes, and the Jamaicans would figure that uh, pulling back well because of the first over 14 runs came from it. And um, now 21 it is for one after four. So they have pulled back nicely in Jamaica. The Windward Islands do, going at a current run rate of 5.2. So Wayson will continue from the firing. Her two overs cost 16 runs. And uh, she will continue from the far end here at Connery. The bowling to James. James is driving, not timing it. Goes bouncing back on the strip. The fielding completed by the fielder moving across to her left. That's Ferron from mid on, or to her right from mid on, she feels. Prevents any possibility of a run. So we are at the start of over number five. So we're still in the power play. In over number five, for his way some coming to bowl to James. A full delivery swung away. It has gone down one bounce into the long leg fence for four. Any signal from the umpire? A full delivery. And there was James swinging it over back of the square for four. Yes, and four well earned runs. So these two keeping a good scoring rate at this particular moment. 78 runs to be had. Going at a current run rate, 5.77. So they are not under any pressure in that sense. So there is no need for any indiscretions. So Wilson will try once more. Short, shorter. The batter does James in behind it easily. And uh, Captain Taylor takes the cover. Fields. And the total remains on 25 for one in over number five. So... Nishan 
Nisha Ann Waysom in a third over none for 20. Bowling to James. Short and she's down on one knee, helping around the corner, down towards fine leg. It's going close to the boundary. And uh, the fielder pulled it back inside the ropes. They would have crossed for two. So two runs to Zeta James, and the total has gone to 27. Yes, so these two keep exchanging the strike quite nicely, picking up the ones and the twos, which is good to see, and urgency in running the first one quick, which is also signals a good sign. With some balls to James. James is pushing it down to Captain Stephanie Taylor. So one delivery remaining. One delivery, one delivery remaining in in the fifth over. And uh, with some will be bowling to Zeta James. James is on 11 from 17. So it's going to be with some. Over the wicket, balls to James. James is in by a good delivery to up the end of over number five. So after five, the windwards, they are 27 for one. Yes, and good pullback there by Waysom as the Windward Islands then pursuit of 102. Wi 102, which was scored by Jamaica. So 103 for victory. Six wickets to Jamaica lost in that process. Now the Windward Islands are trying to overhaul the total of 102 against the Windward Islands. But the Windward Islands all around in this T20 Blaze 20 cricket here at the Connery Cricket Center, they're doing well. The Windward Islands here is one struck to a short mid wicket area. There was a chance for a run out, but the bowler White did not um, accept it. Um, the ball in her hands and it eluded her. So Afri Fletcher most likely was let off and Khalid, that is a bad miss there by White. She should have held it, but in the end, luck favors the Windward Islands. Very, very uh, bad miss by Jamaica because Fletcher was stranded maybe two, three yards out of a crease and White just didn't grasp it. Here's a delivery hit firmly over the head of the fielder at mid-off and it will kick on towards the boundary for four. That's a good shot, well played. And sees the opportunity to pick up a four. Score moves on to 31 for the loss of one. Well, no, there was nothing lackadaisical about that in terms of Afi Fletcher. She did look a little tentative at the start of her innings, but that one was pitched right within her half, and she came nicely onto her front foot as a right-hand batter and struck it over mid-off a few bounces into the mid-off boundary for four. So she looks a bit more purposeful now at the crease, Afi Fletcher. And swinging again, this time in the onside, and it will kick on towards the boundary, pull back just inside the boundary, though. And so they'll have a couple of runs, and that will put the score on to 33 for the loss of one. And Fletcher moves on to seven from her eight. Yes. The field is in, and so she has the opportunity to go over their heads. Yes, and she's doing it. She, her shot selection is on, and really, there's no need to get out in this particular over. White to Fletcher. She's swinging again into the onside, and again, it eludes the fielder, and again, this is good running. They come chasing back for two runs, and so Fletcher moves on to nine, and they score on to 37 for the loss of one. And Afi Fletcher recognizing that the ball was in the air for a while, so... Both batters were doing the ideal thing, going for the first one quick, and in the end, they came back quite easily for the second run. Also recognizing that this is the last over of the power play. Short delivery, swung down, backward of square for four. The fielders out are at third man and on the cover boundary. And so backward square is unprotected, and Afi Fletcher seems to be in a no-nonsense mood. Hit this one down backward of square for four. She goes on to 13, and the score to 39 for one, weighing over number six. Yes, and another productive over for the Windward Islands. And Afi Fletcher, the captain, leading by example, and she should be very much aware now with that, that high percentage of runs so far Probably just um, nudge it around, but if a delivery comes along again loose, why not try to get another boundary? 
but at the same time, not to get out at this particular moment after such a high percentage of runs so 12 far. in the over so far. White is the bowler. Final delivery of a third over. One for 17 now. And for this delivery, it's short, played into the offside, finds the extra cover on the edge of the boundary, and there is no chance of a run. Six overs completed, power play is done, and uh, Winwards chasing 103 for victory. They are 39 for the loss of one. Yes, and that was uh, a good stop there by the fielder at cover from that final delivery. Just getting an accommodative bounce, which assisted uh, and restricted um, the batters not to add any more runs to that total. But Afri Fletcher just having a mid-pitch exchange of words with her partner and no doubt discussing the situation from here on in, what they should be doing. And one of the things might have been that, look, we have gotten 12 off of the last over, so let us see what we can accomplish here, but at the same time that we keep our wickets in hand and continue to build this partnership. We're keeping our eyes on the scores around the island, and we can tell you from Warner Park that the score... 28 for no loss after two, and so Barbados starting in a hurry. And over at St. Paul's, 10 for two. Trinidad, remember that they bowled out Guyana cheaply. Well, interesting encounters. Thank Change you. Change of much. bowling, full toss, swung down for six over deep backward square. And this is the first delivery from Kate Wilmot. And my word, it was pitched on the legs. And Zayda James said, listen, I'll have all of that. And she swung it down over the deep backward square leg boundary for six. The score goes on to 45 for the loss of one. We're in over number seven. And James moves on to 17. Wilmot, again from the far end, bowls to James, who is driving, gets this off the outer portion of the bat. It will go down to third man, who picks up nicely. And so they'll have a single, 46 for one, the windwards. Remember that they're searching for 103 runs for victory. Well, and these two have um, laid a foundation thus far in terms of a partnership. And they are getting a high percentage of boundaries thus far also too. And Afri Fletcher is there, who is the captain, in the ideal situation to be out there and have gotten off to a good little partnership which is building up between the two. And the captain is on strike, who is Afri Fletcher. Full toss. That is over the shoulder, the waist. It will be called uh, a, a no ball. And it goes for four as well. So at five. And so the 50 comes up for the Windward Islands. It's 51 for one. It brings an automatic um, warning from the umpire to the bowler. One more such as that, and she will not be allowed to bowl again. But it also means that this is also a free hit. 51 for one, and we're in over number seven. So the Windwards, they need 52 in eight overs. I said eight overs. No, it's in 82 balls. 52 in 82 balls. So this is again an expensive over. Six, one, four no balls. Uh, she bowls a free hit now to Fletcher, mm -hmm. who is getting a full toss and playing this one down backward square. And it is knocked down by the fielder coming across there from square leg. Wouldn't have been out caught anyhow because it was a free hit. And so there is a single. And the score will move on now to 52 for the loss of one. Fletcher is on 14, 18 to Zayda James. And we're in over number seven. James is on strike. 18 from her 20 as the bowler aborts her run up. And uh, Captain Afi Fletcher is there at the non striker's end. She's in a partnership which is so far a good one with Zayda James, who opened the batting. And for this delivery, she's going back, plays it down to backward square. No chance of a run. Yeah. And so the partnership so far, Victor, is 37. 
Yes, and very good one. But I thought, though, that there were a little ball watching, a little guilty, thinking that it would have cleared the boundary, and the ball was in the air for um, moments. So I thought if there were more urgency, they could have gotten two runs, but that was not the case in that particular situation. Wilmot, again, about to run. Winwards need 51 in 80 deliveries. So where, where does the pressure come from the batters in this particular situation at this particular moment? Difficult to see because there are three fielders who are saving one on the offside. One saving one on the onside. As Wilmot bowls a delivery which is wide of the off stump, called in signal wide as the keeper moves across to her left to take it. And that run will push the score now on to 53 for the loss of one. And we are still not, we still have not completed 10 overs yet. And so this is good going so far by the windwards. As Kate Wilmot from the far end bowls to James, who is trying to play it into the offside, no chance of a run. Defending champions, Jamaica. And uh, this is an unsuccessful defense of their championship. Looks to be Barbados' championship. Here is Wilmot once more. And uh, for this delivery, she's driving into the offside is James. Plays it down to the fielder coming off the cover boundary. They'll have a single to bring up the end of the over. And it's the end of an expensive one, 11 from that over from Wilmot. And the Winwards, they have moved on to 54 for the loss of one, seven overs completed. Yeah, a very valuable over for the Winwards once again. And they have had thus far a high percentage of runs in the majority of the seven overs that have been bowled so far. And with the high percentage of balls to face and runs to be had, um, the Windward Islands should figure in out now also too that once there is no indiscretions with the field widely spread apart from two or three fielders who are inside the 25-yard circle, I think the Windward Islands have a very good opportunity again here to really overhaul the total of 102. But on the other hand, um, one or two good spells from bowlers from Jamaica, it can also give us a different picture here at the Connery Cricket Center. And we are seeing something that we've seen in all of the other games in that Rashada Williams, who started behind the wicket, she has now come out of the gloves and will in fact be bowling. We have seen her come out of the gloves and bowl, but in every instance she has done it at a later stage. Well, and that also too would add value to the team overall um, change of bowlers when you have a player of that quality in your composition who can serve in various areas of the play. And at this particular moment where they need to pull back a wicket or two or even create more dot balls, but for how these two are going, they look absolutely in no bother at this specific moment of play. Well, it says two things, that Jamaica recognized the quality of Rashada Williams as an all-around player, not just as keeper, but as bowler. But it also shows that they are short of bowling, so yeah. that they have to bring her from keeping to bowl. Beautiful observation there, and quite right, uh, that because of the shortness in the bowling attack, but let us see how well she may um, prove to be introduced into the attack right now. Well, her first delivery is no run, played out to cover. So she's not just an opening batsman. She's also a wicket keeper who is a good bowler and bowls now to James, who is playing it down to point. And their very alert movement there uh, restricts the batsmen to their creases. And so 54 for the loss of one, looking for s some... 79 runs to win. Mm. Here is a delivery. Reverse sweep is brought out. Wrong foots the field out. Backward square, but they'll get a single. Enterprise in there by Zaida James. 49 correction to win. I'm being a little bit generous with the amount of runs Jamaica <laughs> uh, asks to defend. It's 55 for one. Mm. Need 48 in 75. 
based on that equation, um, that is uh, indicating to us that there should be absolutely no need for any indiscretion. Absolutely, but cricket is a funny old game. <laughs> um, loss of one wicket could see the loss of others. And most of the times that is a consistent pattern that exists in the game, you know. Rashada Williams bowls a delivery which is short, played into the offside, and the sweeper coming off the cover boundary will tidy up. And so Afi Fletcher will get another run to take on to 15, and it's 56 for one. We're in the eighth over. Here is Williams to bowl to James, who is getting a short delivery, stands up on her. She adjusts well. She saw that it was short and was back looking to pull and then noticed the extra bounce and adjusted really, really well. Yes, good technique. Very, very good technique. Williams once more. This time it shot again and swung to the fielder at backward square, straight into her hands and straight out onto the floor. And so a life there for James. And my word, Jamaica can ill afford this. Yes, and even though it carried, um, it was struck firmly, the, th the more important thing was that the fielder got both hands to it and it fell to the ground. But that would have been what we have been discussing, Carlisle, would have been the appropriate thing now to see the wicket and the partnership would have been broken. It would have let in a new batter who would have had to make some adjustments at the start and there's not much time to adjust in the 2020 format as a batter. But that was luck favoring the Windward Islands. So this foundation of this partnership, it continues in a good vein. Eight overs gone. And the score is 56 for one. The partnership is 41. And Afi Fletcher is on 15 from 14, and James is on 20 from 28. Yes. And I like the look of James also, too. I, I, I find her shot selection has been very consistent, and that adjustment was very, very good, too, that she made in the, in the previous over, where the bowler get an extra bounce, and instead of going hard, she just adjusted. Nation is the new bowler from the far end. First delivery is played on to long on, and a single to Afi Fletcher to take her on to 16, and the score moves on now to 57 for the loss of one wicket. 57 for one. And that's the windwards in chase of 103 runs to win. And with the left and right hand at the crease, and when um, the batters keep getting those singles, the bowlers to always have to adjust their line and length to the different type of batters. Well, the left hander is on strike now, and so she will have to make that adjustment. <laughs> Delivery played into the offside. There's the fielder from extra cover running across to her left and couldn't stop it and so allows a single. And uh, that will place James now to 21. Fletcher is in 16. The score is 58 for one. Nation is the bowler from the far end. This one is short, played into the onside, down to long on. They'll have a single as the fielder comes off the boundary. And uh, so Fletcher will move to 17. And the score now to 58, 59 for the loss of one. 44 needed in 69 balls. <laughs> James is on strike. Nation is the bowler. And uh, she goes around the wicket, gives this one generous flight. And it's played back down the track. No chance of a run. Three runs in the over so far. Two deliveries left. And uh, Nation, right arm around. Again, this one is given generous flight, played out to extra cover, um, gets away from the fielder there. They'll have a single. The score will move to 60, and James will move to 22, and it will bring Fletcher up to take strike. We're one ball away from the completion of the ninth over. And it's Nation who is bowling to Fletcher. This one is a full toss over the head height. And it is swung away over the mid-wicket boundary for six. And, and uh, we await the signal from the umpire. Um, it's, no, it's signal four, in fact. And uh, we are waiting for the signal from the umpire of no ball. And yes, it is. And now comes the signal of the free hit. So the 50 partnership comes up in 44 balls. And uh, that's excellent going there by 
the Windward Island team, 65 for the loss of one, and we're at the stage of a free hit. Afi Fletcher is batting, she's on 21, and Nation comes up to bowl to her, and she's down, driving, misses, goes through the keeper, and they'll run a bye. And so it's a bye to finish the over, 66 for the loss of one, 37 runs are needed, nine overs completed. Zayda James is 22 from 31, Fletcher is 21 from 18, and uh, so the windwards seem to be in control at this moment. Yes, indeed, and in full control also too. And that this partnership is a very good one between James and Afi Fletcher, and how we look at the present moment being set, both batters, uh, I think that they should try and go through the remaining overs and also just go over the total of 102 because with the field widely spread and with the strike rate that they are going at, which is some 66 balls and uh, just some 30 other runs or so they're about to get. But here is the delivery, almost chopping it onto her stumps. And suppose I tell you, Victor, that from Warner Park, Barbados, when last we heard, were 52 for five against the Leewards. Here is a delivery played into the offside, and uh, Afi Fletcher is on strike. She runs through for a single. She goes on to 22, 67 for one. And the Windwards are looking for 103 to win. They need 36 from 64. Zaida Jameson strike. And so an interesting score coming from Warner Park. Well, this is what was sent to me from, well from Earl Smitten, Barbados, 52 for 5. That is very and Earl, we would want you to confirm that because we are seeing something different. 69 for 5? 69 without loss, we are told from somebody who is monitoring the site. So Earl Smitten, please... Tell us that you were wrong. Here's a delivery, which is played into the onside, down backward of square by James. She gets a boundary to take her on to 26, and the score goes to 71 for one. In the game at St. Paul's, 20 for four, after 12 overs on one ball, Trinidad and Tobago. So that's an interesting score. Uh, Earl, could it be that you were telling us that Barbados needed 52 from five overs? Perhaps. But we'll get that sorted out for you. Delivery played into the offside. Brings the fielder from the cover boundary. A single to James. She moves on to 27. And the score to 72 for one. So we're in over number 10. And uh, this is being bowled by Williams. And this delivery is played gently into the offside. No chance of a run. And the score remains on 72 for one. James is on 27. Fletcher is on strike. She is on 22. And so 10 overs have been completed. And at the 10 over break, 72 for one. That's the score of the Windward's women. And they're looking for another 31 runs to win this game in 10 overs. And so, Gary, we might be having an early lunch. Yes, definitely, because the winner is scoring now at just over seven runs for over. And uh, the target is just 103, so another 30, 31 more runs to win. And so they they'll be ending the T20 Blaze on a winning note. But the Jamaica team... They came in here as the defending champions, but they have not really played well. The, the bowling, as you would have indicated, seemed to be a bit short. And I'm a bit surprised I'm not seeing Stephanie, Stephanie Taylor bowling in, the, in this T20 plays. I think she did a few overs in the Super 50, but I don't think she has bowled an over in the T20 plays. Yeah, place. the, the ba Jamaica team simply didn't put up a good defense. Their bowling seems a little bit short. And uh, what do you make of the score, though, coming from St. Paul's? The... The Guyanese made 38, 
and uh, they are defending stoutly 24 after 12 overs. But that's why I'm asking Vicky to investigate. Maybe something is wrong with the pitch. The pitch probably is is, is a bit I don't know. It's a bit damp. It's a bit it's it's a bit tacky. I don't know because for 12 overs for 20 plus runs, the guy needs to have batted 19 overs for 30 39 runs. That's something seemed to be a bit amiss there at at um, St. Paul's, but. Nonetheless, the game is, is playing, and we'll have to wait and see if that, that is going to be a close one because four wickets down, if Guyanese can pick up another couple of wickets early, then you could start, you could put some pressure on Trin that you might have the Guyanese winning. Absolutely. So anything is possible. Here at our game, we can tell you it's 72 for one. The Windwards are chasing 103 runs for victory, and they have come out very positively, Gary. Yes. Definitely, that's that's the you, the, that's the way you want to play. If you would have you would have gotten the, the advantage from the bowling, you would have just dismissed. You you restricted them to 102, and then you you should not be under much pressure. The first over went for 14 runs, and since that, after the pressure came in, the first couple of, of balls that she would have faced, she looked a bit a bit um, lethargic. But she has now gotten into a stride and, and are batting well, and they're scoring in excess of of seven runs per over. So Jamaican are looking. Flat-footed, they're looking a bit flat in from the very the game that they played against Barbados. I think that from that game they just seem a bit flat. They won the first two games, but after that they seem to be jaded. Well, Nation will continue from the far end, and she'll be bowling to Zaida James. James has looked good. She has looked better as the tournament has progressed. Yes, yes, yes. She has certainly been batting well. As Nation comes up to bowl to her, this one is short and wide, played down to backward point. And this is one part of the game that you keep trying to teach your batters. Had she left that, she would have had an extra ball in the over mm -hmm. and a run from the wide. But she played it and got nothing. She had to stretch, stretch a long way to get to it. And she would have, suppose she had gotten on the edge and get caught behind. Exactly. Now Nation has changed. She's going over the wicket to the left under James. And uh, for this delivery, it's short. She's pulling into the onside, finds the fielder coming from backward square. She closes down quickly, and there will be no runs. Seventy-two for one. Here is Nation again. It is short again. It bounces more than once, and so you'll see the call of no ball. And uh, that arm goes out straight away from umpire Laborde. And uh, that's because the ball bounced more than once. Yes, so the score will move to 73 for one. No ball means it's a free hit. Nation seems like an occasional bowler. This one is flatter, faster. And down the leg side, she's trying to swing it away as James. Comes from her body. And so there will be no runs. Here is Nation once more, and this one is played into the offside, exploring the possibility of a single, none there, and the score remains on 73 for one. So apart from the no ball, no runs from the other four deliveries in the over. As Nation bowls once more, and this delivery, she's defending into the offside, nice soft hands, and so they'll have a single, James moves to 28, and they score to 74 for one. Current partnership is on 59 from 57. That's good. Afi Fletcher has contributed 22 of those, and James 26 of those. It is the captain Fletcher who has come up to take strike. Current run rate is at 6.83. Required run rate is at 3.31 as Fletcher facing up to Nation with the last ball of the over. Flatter, faster, played into the onside, and the fielder from midwicket has to chase towards backward square. They'll have a single, and that will bring up the end of the over, at the end of which it's 75 for one, 11 overs completed. And the winner is going very well. At Shadin Nation seemed to be one of those bowlers who is not afraid to try something to get a wicket out. I saw in the previous matches bowling some loop up full deliveries, trying to what we would say colloquially buy a wicket. 
And in the soul, we saw her pouring a very short delivery, looking to see if she can receive the batter as well. So she seemed to be a bowler who wanted to try different things to see if she can get a wicket for the, for the Jamaicans. So Williams will continue from this the media center end. Delivery, which is driven back to the bowler, and there is no chance of a run. So Rashada Williams, who started keeping at the top of the inning, has switched to bowling. Mm. And this delivery is teasingly flighted. Fletcher is using her feet, gets to the pitch and defends, back down the track for the bowler. Here is a delivery shot played into the offside. And uh, she has, has she hit a wicket? Because she went back and played it down to the sweeper coming off the boundary and didn't attempt to run, and she's out hit wicket, in fact. And so Afi Fletcher is out, hit wicket. So Fletcher is out for 23 from 25. And uh, the win was losing their skipper, going back onto the stumps and playing on the stumps. And he got it down towards the back of the point area, but she played, uh, she struck the stumps and she has been given out. And uh, the Winners lose in the second wicket. Gary, I haven't seen a batter out hit wicket in a long, long time. And I had to wait to see it on the monitor. After I realized they were not running, I figured it had to be out hit wicket. Jamaica will take a wicket any which way. It's 75 for two, 28 runs are needed. He brings in a new batter to take strike, and that new batter is Joseph. And Kiana Joseph has come into this round of matches with the most runs in the tournament. She came in, I think it's 108 runs she would have scored in this tournament thus far. It's uh, 108. <coughs> At St. Paul's, Gary, Trinidad and Tobago, 22 for 5. Here is a short delivery, which is turned into the onside by Joseph. And there is no chance of a run. No runs in the over yet so far. 75 for 2. We're in over number 12. One a park, it's 80 for 1. Here's a delivery, which is short, turning away from Joseph. And uh, she allows it to go through to the keeper. No chance of a run. So Barbados, 80 for one, in hunt of not just a victory, but a championship. Here's a delivery, which is bringing Josie forward. Plays it back down the track. End of a maiden wicket over, at the end of which 12 overs are completed. And uh, in this T20 blaze, the score is 75 for the loss of two. Winwards searching for 103 to win. But the winner is still in front after the 12 over. They have lost just two wickets, another 28 runs for victory. So as I would have indicated, Kiana Joseph came into this round of matches in this round with 108 runs from her four matches. She has an average of 54, strike rate of 102.86. And she has struck some 10 fours. And then she, has made, she made a half century in the last game. So she has had a good tournament with the bat. I think she would have also picked up a few wickets as well, so she has done pretty well. Gary, more trouble from St. Paul's. Hmm. The last score I'm seeing, 22 for 6 after 14 overs and one ball. And Trent Sargent is keeping us up to date on that game. Guyana hunting for a victory. So the 18 runs, another 18 runs, 4 wickets. Here, there are 28 runs which are needed by the winwards. And uh, it's the first delivery of the over, which is played back down the track. That's a new bowler from the far end. It's Nicole Campbell. And she's bowling to James, who is on 28. And for this delivery, it's a full toss played into the hands of the fielder at short 
fine leg, and that's a wicket from a full toss. And Jamaica will take them any which way. She didn't hit it cleanly, didn't hit it well, went straight into the hands of White, and she grabbed it gleefully. Wicket number three goes down, and what that means is that you'll have two new batters at the crease. So a good, good wicket for, <laughs> for the Jamaicans. The Zeta James, who was batting well, she, she made 28 from 41 deliveries, but a full delivery. And if you don't dispatch it properly, you can give, you ha you can give your hands away. And that's what exactly happened, a full delivery. She went down on one leg, and she played it straight down to Selena White inside a circle at Backwood Square. And Zeta James has been dismissed. So the new batter is Crafton. So what the win was, no need to worry as yet. And uh, they're scoring at 6.08. So the new batter is the left-handed Crafton. And uh, two wickets going with the score on 75. What it means is that both set batters are gone. And uh, there are two new batters at the crease. Here is Campbell to bowl to Crafton, who is playing it firmly back down the track. Straight to the bowler. No runs. So uh, a good partnership of 60. And then two wickets going with the score on 75. Here is Campbell. And uh, she's driving and missing at this delivery. Goes through to the keeper. McLean is doing those duties now. And there is no chance of a run. So still 75 for three. And uh, no runs in the over so far. A wicket in the over. Here is Campbell. And uh, for this delivery, she's getting a wide delivery. Tries to swing it away. Misses. And this call of wide goes up by umpire Laborde. And so the score moves to 76 for three. Campbell, left arm spinner from the far end, bowls to Crafton, who is trying to play it into the onside, misses. They have gone through for one. They should come back for the second run, and they come chasing through for the second of what will be wides. And so add three to the score, 79 for the loss of three, weighing over number 13. Crafton is adjusting her pads, now putting her gloves back on, and getting ready to take strike from Campbell. Four runs in the over so far, and a wicket, as Campbell comes up to bowl to Crafton, who is driving in the air, goes down to the fielder at mid-off. They'll have a single, and so the score will move to 80. 23 needed now. 80 for the loss of three. One delivery left in over number 13. Here is Campbell. And for this delivery to Joseph, she's driving down the track to the bowler. Brings up the end of a successful over for Campbell. At the end of it, 13 overs completed. The windwards are 80 for 3. Remember, they're looking for 103 for victory. Right, they're inching closer to victory. In the even though they would have lost those two wickets, the, the they're still in, in, good in a good position to win this encounter here and to end the T20 blaze on a winning note. On the other hand, the Jamaicans would want to continue to pick up wickets to see if they can put any pressure on the Winwoods. But things are looking good for, for the Winwood Islands. Nation has been switched to this, the commentary box end. And she'll be bowling to Crafton. Nation before this, none for 12 from her two overs. As Jamaica in search of wickets. Mm. Delivery outside the off stump, given generous flight. And uh, there is Crafton trying to play a big booming drive, misses completely. 
and it's taken by the keeper, McLean. Nation with number eight on her back. And uh, she's bowling to Crafton. Crafton is on one. And uh, for this delivery, she's going back, plays it into the offside, finds backward point, and there is no chance of a run. So the required run rate is at 3.45. Run rate presently is at, at, at six. 23 needed in 40. But the Jamaicans are stringing some dot balls together. This one is wow. wide of the crease. It was more of a hopeful delivery, given ample flight, but pitch wide, attempting to buy a wicket. Results in a single 81 for three. Here is Nation once more. Faster, driven into the offside, and uh, fielded nicely by the fielder at backward point. No runs. Crafton is one from six. Joseph is none from four. Here is Nation. Again, given flight, played into the offside. They're running through for a single. Could be trouble here. And uh, the throw was not as firm as it could have been. And uh, so Crafton had the opportunity to use those long legs of hers and get home for a single. Score 82 for three. Yeah, it could have been closer if the, the field at that backward point that Campbell had the return in quicker. But the batter got home. Here is Nation, faster, down the leg side. And some contact is made. It is racing towards the boundary. Will it get there? Yes, it does. And that's four runs to the windwards. They move on to 86 for the loss of three. And Joseph gets off the mark with four. So inching closer to victory, and uh, so 17 runs away, the Winwoods. And this is still in a white is warming up, so maybe she will be coming into the attack from the other end. Here is Nation, <laughs> and again, this is given generous <laughs> flight <laughs> and hit <laughs> in the air, straight to the fielder at mid-off. And so that's the captain there, Taylor, taking a simple catch. And as it were, buying the wicket, and it paid off. Didn't use a feet, didn't get to the pitch of the delivery, just went for power. And in the end, didn't get power, didn't get placement, and it went straight to Stephanie Taylor as the windwards lose wicket number four. That's the wicket of uh, Joseph, who was gone. And uh, so it's now 86 for the loss of four. 70 needed in 36. Well, that is what you call... Buying a wicket, as, as I have been indicating, that nation nation has not been afraid to to bowl those loop up deliveries, trying to buy a wicket, and she got the wicket of of Joseph, and so the Jamaicans be hoping that they can continue to pick up wickets, but just 17 runs away from victory required rate is just 2.83, and so it looked like Edward is the new batter for the Winwards. Delivery, which is played back down the track, and uh, a no run scored. Crafton is on two from eight. Her partner, who has just joined her, is Edward and not. Nicole Campbell is the bowler. And uh, for this delivery to Crafton, she's back, plays it firmly to extra cover, and uh, she feels nicely, no runs. 86 for four, in over number 15. 86 for two at one apart. How many overs left? Here is Campbell to bowl to Crafton, who is hitting in the air. There's a fielder chasing back. Will she take it? No, it goes over her head. And uh, these half chances, Jamaica would be, would be ruined because if they take these chances, that didn't go to hand, but it was so close. I'm sure they would have been thinking, here we go again. 87 for four. Here is Campbell to bowl to Edward, who is getting a wide delivery. And uh, in this game, 
bowl wide. The batting side will benefit by one. Score moves on to 80, 88 for four. We in over number 15. Trinidad just lost another wicket down at St. Paul, so seven wickets down. Hmm. 29, they need another 11, I think. Here is a delivery which is played back to the bowler, and there is no chance of a run. So action aplenty in this final round of the T20 Blaze. Campbell it is, bowling to Edward. And for this delivery, she's back, trying to play it into the onside, misses, no chance of a run. Something tells me that this one could become even more interesting. Final delivery of over number 15. It's Campbell who is bowling to Edwards. It's 88 for four. Here is a delivery which is driving. It goes down to long off. They are through quickly for a single. And the score will move on to 89 for the loss of four wickets. And uh, so 15 overs are done. 89 for four. And uh, that's the end of my stint. You will hear the voice of Victor Eddy after the voice of Gary Pemberton. All right, so the, the winners are uh, inching, inching ever so close, closer to victory. They are 15 runs away with some 15 or 14 runs away with some 15 overs completed. And uh, Crafton is on three from 10. Malika Edwards is on one from three. And extras 17. And a very interesting game at at St. Paul's. Victor is supposed to be investigating what is happening at St. Paul's. 29 for eight. 29 now for eight. I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the pitch, Victor. 39 all, all out and now 28, 29 for eight. You well have to, you, we need an investigation, Victor. Well, my investigation is, that I will give the bowlers the, 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 the privilege to say that a lot of times bowlers don't get the commendations that they deserve. And I think the bowling at St. Paul's is the reason why they are putting the batters into making mistakes. And uh, that is a very interesting encounter. So you're quite right. They said it earlier. It's a game of glorious uncertainties. I was um, speculating on a hat trick. I do not know if one was in that particular match there at St. Paul's. But that is the beauty of the game. But here at the Connery Cricket Center, 30 balls to get 14 runs. Winwood Islands, large and in charge. And I think they're going to come away victorious and how well they have played so far. So White has been brought back into the attack. Bowling to Edwards. Plays it back down the strip and there is no chance of a run. 89 at the start of over number 16. So just some 14 runs away the vic the, the win of the Islands. So they'll be looking to end and they'll be ending the T20 Blaze on a winning note. And uh, the batter, Malika, Edwards is looking to heave it into the onside. It was struck on the pad and uh, no damage is done. So Winwoods would have done well in this T20 Blaze. So if they would go on to win this, they'll win three out of their five matches. And Selena White was also picked up some wickets and she's beaten by a slower delivery, playing a bit too early, taken behind by the keeper. So White has been brought back into the attack to see if she can pick up a, a wicket or two here and maybe try and put some pressure on the windwards, but no pressure thus far on the windwards. They have been batting well, the nothing devilish in the pitch, apart from the turn and bounce you saw from Afi Fletcher. I have not seen anything else happening. Full delivery on the onside, swung away for four. It was full and there was Edwards just picking it, picking it up well and swung it down through back of the square for four. Yes, and many times, many times when um, teams are not performing well. They look for areas for excuses. And one of the areas is whether it's the umpires, the nature of the pitch, but do not look actually at how they have been played instead of looking for blame for the mistakes that they might have made in this game. Well, Winward's not making much or many mistakes and getting closer for victory here at the Connery Cricket Center. There's 10 runs away with 26 deliveries to be faced. Right, so with that boundary, the total has gone on to 93 in over number 16. As White, short and swinging in the air over mid wicket. It will go into the boundary for another bound, another four. Was short again, and uh, there was Edwards playing it in the air over Stephanie Taylor. 
at Midwicket, down towards the boundary for four. 97 it is. Yeah, and the placement was good. It was in the air, but cleared the feeler inside the 25-yard circle, even though there is a feeler on the deep Midwicket boundary. Um, it was wide and far to her right. So now the, the total is 97 for four, and the Windward Islands just need some six runs now for victory. And Gary Pemberton, how well the Windward Islands collectively have played. Apart from the wicket keeper today, I think all around that the Windward Islands really came to this series well prepared and they have demonstrated very consistent and good performances in this series. So they are one hit away from victory. A six could do it. And so it's going to be Crafton. We'll be facing up to Nicole Campbell. 97 it is for four. We have seen some good performances. And Crofton just pushed it into the onside. It's a half century from, from Kiana Joseph in the last game. Afi Fletcher would have picked up some wickets. And Kiana Joseph would have gotten the most wickets in the Super 50 competition. Afi Fletcher would have scored some runs as, as well in the Super 50. And uh, there is Crafton looking to sweep a wide delivery on the onside, signal by umpire Laborde. So it just moves on by one. And the total has gone on to 98 for four. So there's five runs away from victory the Winwards. And they'll be happy with the way they would have ended in terms of winning the last game. Flight to delivery. And Crafton is driving easily into the offside for a single, Stephanie Taylor. She's down at long off. So one more to the total. It has gone on to 99. The target is just 103. So you need another four runs at a required rate of 1.09. 28 for nine in St. Paul's. Around the wicket. Oh, 38 for nine. And pushed into the offside. We get a single to bring up the 100 for the Winwood team, so the single total has gone on to 100 for four, Victor. Yes, and a very good performance here by the Windward Islands once again. But down at St. Paul's, very intriguing and interesting encounter. And really, um, that has really been one of, uh, uh, on the side of a smaller total. But here now, the Windward Islands, very close to victory and... Here is one driven down to mid-off. They're going to get a single, and they're going to get closer to what is required for them to take victory here against the defending champions, uh, Jamaica. So just two runs away from victory, the Winwards. They are 101 for four. Two balls remaining in over number 17. So we're looking to probably finish it in this over as Campbell to... Crafton, she's swinging into the onside. They come too quickly for the single. And not good feeling by Celina White will give away the extra run. They'll come back for it. And that will spell victory for the Windward Islands. Get coming through for the second run. And Windward's winning by some six wickets here over Jamaica. 103 it is for four. Congratulations to the Windward's on winning over Jamaica. Their final game of the T20 Blaze here in Connery. Yes, and very convincing win for the uh, Windward Islands against the defending champions Barbados and how well the Windward Islands have played throughout this T20 Blaze regional women cricket. The players in their usual way congratulating each other of the successful performances and demonstrating the sportsmanship. Guess what Victor? Uh -huh. The Guyanese have won by one run in St. Paul's. 38 all out. Well, I, I'm, I'm not surprised because remember when it was 39, I mentioned about a hat-trick. So our upper bowler getting a hat-trick, so I'm not certain. But that, does, that was a, a very, very entertaining and interesting game down there at the St. Paul's mm -hmm. Recreation very Ground. poor batting performance by both teams. Well, poor batting performances, but very good bowling too. You have to give some, some credentials to the bowlers because <coughs> it would have meant that the bowlers would have bowled well and place the batsmen into making mistakes. So, um, ending on a very good note there, but the Windward Islands ending on a very exceptional note here at the Canary Cricket Center. So, Gary, some <laughs> updates possibly? And All right, so the transfer? game here has been completed where the Windward's winning over Jamaica by six wickets. Jamaica was inserted. They made 102 for six from the 20 overs. Windward's in reply, 103 
for four and 16.5 overs. Congratulations to the winners. And this is our final broadcast in the T20 Blaze or the, the West Indies women's competition, which was played in St. Kitts. It started with the Super 50 and has been concluded with the T20 Blaze winners winning over the Jamaicans by some six wickets. So that's it from Connery.